What's up, guys? So this is it. This is the um, anticipated uh, Dark Synovia collab, along with special guests uh, Kara Stokely, aka the Stone Soviet, and Falcone General. Um, basically, um, Falcone was not quite sure if she would be able to make this or not, but she made time. Um, unfortunately, she had to go um, about 45 or so minutes in, and then um, uh, uh, stoned uh, <laughs> kind of fell asleep on us. So, um, but regardless, we still got a lot of good content, and uh, me and Dark Snovia will finish off on a um, irrelevant tangent. Let's just put it that way. It's two hours and 45 minutes, you guys. If you stick around that long, you're the real MVPs. So, there you go. Okay. We are live. live. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Hello, you. Hi. Hi, bitches. We're back. <laughs> Hi. Did you miss us? <laughs> Damn it. Probably the chat got so fucking quiet. Smokers, Colorado. Probably yeah. the most hated group of people <laughs> by certain people outright <laughs> now. We're celebrating our spring break, bitches. <laughs> right. We came back. We came back to terrorize you all I mean, and have it? a fun. Fun time terrorizing all you fuckers. I, I and also, be, what? I hate to be a You came to terrorize sport, us too? I hate to be a spoil sport, but uh, considering that a lot of the topication that we're going to be talking about is going to be getting on the factor of the literal genocide attempt that's going on against us right now. Fun would not be the words I would candor towards. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Well, Can we ha like start off with a bit of a perfect. light note, like you, a bit you... of a light note, because we're here to terrorize these people. Not, yeah, but, yeah, but on a serious not... note, though, I mean, there I, is, well, I there mean, is a... I am gonna be like divulging Girl. into more than just terrorization. There will be terrorization. You are right. That will and that will be fun. It's good to have fun in the moments of terror. <laughs> But like the actual generalized whole of the situation is gonna be big saddle. Um, True. But the, what's it? I, I, especially when we get onto the um, is it Christchurch shooting? I can't remember. So many different shootings. Run! But, it's a um, church. The, 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 the school that was the the church the the, the Christian school that was shut up or whatever the fuck. Um, oh, uh, uh, in Nashville, yeah. Nashville. There we go. The Nashville. Oh, run! Shooting. It's Christian. Yeah. That um, when right, we get into natural. that and the tragedy of what went on there, um, I will be, I will be Twirling. basically detract. I will be basically detracting from that because the real conversation doesn't need to be about the shooter. The shooter's a yeah. shooter. It's a, like at the end of the day, there's a hell of a lot more we can say about masculine culture in American society that caused that shooting to happen than about trans culture. And also, I think we noticed with a lot of these shooters, actually, no, you know what? I ain't gonna go balls to the wall. I guarantee you more than fucking 75, 80% of these fucking shooters are petty bourgeois or labor aristocrat. They're not like poor white people. These yeah. people commit shootings with AR-15s of like $1,500 worth of attachments that they snuck out of their parents' collection. Like, you yeah. know, working class white families, even, and, and they, they, you know, they still at least somewhat, you know, uh, not monumentally, but they're still somewhat better off than black families. They can't afford know. tons of weapons to, to arm themselves up. And so when we look at these shootings, like, you know, that's sort of simple but basic shit. You know, it's petty bourgeois white men for the most part that we can see. Uh, really to be looking at would be the actual way in which this has been targeted for the blame of transphobia from the very moment it happened. You know, they originally accused it of being a trans woman that committed the shooting before anyone knew that it was done by a trans man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say this. 
I don't know. There was this one shooter, I think, but it wasn't a school shooter. But one of them was like the guy who became like basically one of the, like the founding fathers of like the incel fucking cult. Yo, that was the only like, shit, by the way. Uh, <laughs> 4chan and everything. It's because I'm laying down on the pillow. That's why. Um, you you both in the speaker, are you? <laughs> no, I got it on my AirPod right now. I'm literally speaking uh, through an AirPod. Oh, that's the that's the downfall of them. The microphone is in the ear, so as soon as you lie on the side, which is I just um, meal. comfortable way to lie down. Like you just end up muting oh, yourself. Son of a bitch! Uh, can you guys hear me now? Yes, yeah. nice and clear. Okay, what was I going to say? You know that one shooter that um, basically became, like, the founding father of, like, the incel cult or something like that on all these lives? Technically speaking, the founding father of the incels is, uh, is Adolf Hitler, but that's giving the game away a bit. <laughs> no, I think no, it was, I'm like, not, this I'm guy joking. whose name like, was, he like... Was, he was, like, uh, he preached uh, uh, intentional celibacy after... Uh, he uh, raped his cousin and she killed herself. Yeah. Um, and that's where the incel community's philosophy actually comes from. Um, yeah. I was about to say, um, it was, this, I think it was this guy named like Nick or some shit like that. Hmm. He got so mad that like women went and date him or some shit like that. And he was like talking about how much he hated women so fucking much. Then he basically went and took like this, um, gun and basically shot up this fucking gas station and killed some women and then killed himself and he has like these like diaries and shit like that that incels use as like their manifesto or some shit like that yeah it's uh toxic masculinity has evolved incelism to be even more aggressive than it was 80 years ago um nowadays it's so much more aggressive because men um have this belief that so the role of trans women is to steal the women away from them it's them trying to get an advantage in the competition for ownership over women uh, they think oh, it's men playing an age game rather than like they're being more women if they're going on about like like if anything it increases their chances of making women if they're not to be bigots about it like if they actually think about it but by being bigots not only will they not ever date any of the trans women but a lot of the cis women are going to not want to be with them either like stop being a bigot <laughs> you know what's even funnier though so you know like andrew tate whose ass is currently in jail <laughs> and belongs yeah. there fucking but fucking you know how so basically he even said this he said he made this scenario he's like would you take um a uh, a bio woman who's like a one or this trans woman with a dick uh, like who's rated as a 10 or some shit like that. And I hate, uh, and he's like, no, take the trans woman with a dick who's a 10 instead of the bio <laughs> woman who's a one. A one because I rather prefer a ten over a one or some shit like that. I, mean, I was like, "Oh Why, hell no!" Do you even know their personality? Like, this is my question. <laughs> um, also, what's it? Men can't get their mind past just uh, uh, us having sausages. Like the idea that like trans women will want to get rid of them either through the natural way that um. T blockers and hate and uh, estrogen actually causes it to reformulate into more like a feminine structured organ, um, which also includes shredelage. But the um, what's it? <laughs> um, with all the cis people are gonna be like, oh, I have to go. <laughs> chill out, <laughs> or you know, vaginal plasty, which you know, or oh, some women. Like to have the sausage still perfectly at full length. Some even get sad that it's not any bigger, but like, you know, there's a diversity to the way we look at our genitalia and to like center this like image of just like the trans woman with the with the dick. It's like, okay, well that's a reduction. I mean, don't call it a dick anyway. It's a fucking Glock. I will beat you to death with it. <laughs> while I will have it's something a black hole. An annoying I trouser don't... snake state. But the uh what's it? Um fucking uh, the it's it's a black hole of reasoning because like the situation is 
you have this whole mannerism where these men whom fetishize uh, women with dicks will stunt people's transitions in the first two examples I given of um, natural changes to the genitalia via transition or severage, or they will fetishize the natural changes via transition and prevent people from getting vaginal plasty for as long as possible so that it causes the atrophy in that area so they can fetishize it. Like there is so much chaser fetishizism that's crazy. It makes me so fucking frightened to engage in cis men on a sexual basis. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, yeah. no, it's not like 100% um, off the table, but like, holy fuck. The situation that is created in the environment of society, both relationship wise and sexual wise, when engaging with cis men feels so dangerous because of the chaser element, because of, uh, a lot of people will hide their transphobic beliefs until they're in a position where they can privately express them. And if you're someone who wants to actually violently hurt a trans person, it's not off the table to you to for, 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 for them to allure us into a situation where we get attacked. Oh, the other thing too. So, for example, um, I remember I was watching this shit that was happening. And they were talking about the whole Leah Thomas shit that went oh, on yeah. and how it ended up being like some tie or something of the sort and that she won and all this shit. So the person that came in second place, who's a cis woman, is literally like trying to say like, oh, they rigged it against me and shit like yeah. that. And it's unfair how this um, supposed uh, woman... Uh, beat me and all this other shit and I'm like um honey are you mad that you lost and that you lost to someone who wait can I continue who lost who won because they were an actual like better swimmer than you and you were just a horrible swimmer and you're just a fucking loser what? There was what's the, there's a there's a worse situation. Did you see the one with the runners where like basically there's this white woman having a go at black women because they're trans and they had like an unfair advantage? Like oh my god, the vagueness oh. and the argumentation uh, is just so racist <laughs> in what it's implying. Like oh my god, transphobia um, then- and racism have like so much in common anyway. I mean like transphobia in the modern context comes from the Nazis, which was literally the accusation that Jewish people created trans people to weaken the white race. The other thing too, um, you know, there was this other time where in the Olympics, they were having to do this thing where basically they banned this, um, track star who, um, was South African and she, um couldn't participate because supposedly her testosterone levels were too high and so due to that test she can't run uh and participate in the olympics because she's not women enough to be able to do it because her testosterone level is um too high honey she is a cisgender woman this lady is a woman, no matter fucking testosterone levels or shit like that. What's it? Fucking so the the situation is as well is that like so sports originally wasn't segregated <laughs> um when women got access to sports in the eighteen hundreds. Um and before then posh women had access to sports the whole time because you know power you know equals freedom in the sense of the way the bourgeois system works um not really freedom i mean they're slaves to their own capital but you know what i mean like they have the power to actively go about and employ themselves into things that we are restricted from and not able to do so and so within that framework there was an altercation where then middle class and even to a lesser degree uh, 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 uh the working class were allowed access to sports in the 1800s. What then ensued 
was men getting their asses whooped in pretty much every field of sport. <laughs> and so they then banned yeah. women from men's sports and segregated it so that the women didn't get beaten too much by the men that were losing all the time. I my, One of my favorite things that I've been finding is just kind of how all these freaking, you know, reactionary fascists are basically like uh it, it's like now they're starting to kind of like tear uh, other cis women apart like for instance the um recent one one of the examples i've seen recently was um daniel radcliffe you know, uh his um his uh, girlfriend is pregnant and um, somebody was making some room. I forgot who it was. I think it was, I think the name was Suzanne. Was it Suzanne Sodden or something like that? I don't remember, remember what her name was, but she was basically saying that uh, his girlfriend, who again is pregnant, um, that somehow she's a trans woman because, uh, you know, she's, you know, taller than he is and oh my know, god you know and i guess Daniel, something about her jawline like a twink like i know anyway, like he's what not like he's not, like he's not like he's not like some buff hunk guy like the thing that makes daniel radcliffe like oh yeah i would get fucked by that is because he's not a threatening dude he's like he's rather chill like yeah shit. Um... <laughs> the other thing too is like the whole like her being tall thing makes no sense like that and also the other thing too is trans women can't get pregnant exactly we can't. like it's, we don't it's, have uh, people keep making up myths about it you know like genuinely the... this is a recurring myth that keeps coming from like turfs and shit that like that, that like trans like so- surgery and healthcare is like now like forcing like men to have <laughs> pregnancies and like you know like what they're doing is they're taking the statement that men can get pregnant because i mean men can uh, trans men can but like yeah they're trying to imply that like we're saying cis men turn uh uh, could could get pregnant um because (laughs) they believe that trans women are just you know we're we're all just cis men in disguise boogly 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 you know that's why we (laughs) that's why we take literal hrt to change ourselves because we just want to be in disguise so you know how much this would traumatize someone if they were cis like right uh, they, if, yeah. if, they, like everyone goes on about like like people and def- there definitely are people that make mistakes people can make mistakes and take big decisions in their life especially if you've got a lot of shit going on yourself but the whole idea of like trans rejection comes down to like less than two percent of people most of the time because a lot of the people that actually back out of transition is because of social circumstances and it is very traumatic to come back out of it and can put people off and make them have to go through a process of rekindling themselves with it because when if i drop this i go through post menopause syndrome and i suffer with fibromyalgia post menopause syndrome causes symptoms of fibromyalgia i do not need more fibromyalgia thank you very much um (laughs) um and so, yeah, like, I think... transition is a very, very painful experience that some trans people have to go through to survive before they can yeah. then re-get on their medication again. But, yeah. I, you know, I didn't come to the point of making this decision without spending, you know, years of my life contemplating on it for it to be a small decision. And as well, one thing to understand is before you're a teenager... <laughs> You do have an idea that your gender is different. When I was five, I had already figured it out. And before I, and I, whilst it was an in and out motion because of the toxic masculinity in my household, I did not actually, I, I refused to conform to masculinity until I was in my teenage years. And that's when I started trying to double down on it. And that's the period I would say I actually was behaving in a way where I was male. And that's the chunk of my life that is, the most dead of it where it's got that most masculine period yeah my younger years is more confusing like that i have to pass i really am learning so much about myself that i've suppressed and i'm i I don't know how to handle a lot of it especially considering my memory is not as good as it used to be um but uh the um my teenage years were quite interesting though because i kept having like on and off moments of realizing that i'm a woman but like 
I yeah. kept then slighting myself and putting myself down. And like, <laughs> I just kept going through the motions. I mean, I threw away friends because they, the me being friends with them was making me start to open up to the fact that I'm trans. Like, like yeah. it's not as simple as that. Like, I didn't try and throw them away. If they kept speaking to me, I would have spoken to them, but I stopped engaging. Like, I backed away, and that is, in my eyes, throwing away. Like, I am going to kick myself to the fucking floor. Like, oh. even though I know they don't see it that way. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Let me mention this other thing, which has to do with the topic we're also discussing and what people in our chat are also talking about. So the demonization of us and how we're supposed to be like these like pedophiles and all this other like shit and these child groomers that are trying to take over the young kid's mind and turn them into <laughs> transgenders. Mwahahaha. It's, it's a little um, preach to white genocide. So let me um also like bring up the fact that I love how these right wingers always bring this shit up every single fucking time mm-hmm. but recently there have been cases there have been literally next to non cases of us trying to do this shit uh, recently as of now there has been reports coming from the Maryland Attorney General's office where they have found over 150 Catholic priests have abused, have found uh, 600 cases of sexual abuse towards children in the Baltimore City area. Are you kidding me? But there's no mention of drag queens, transgender, transgender people, or anything of the sort. But literally, they're able to find 600 abuse claims in one city alone from 100, almost 150 fucking pastors. But no mention of drag queens or transgender people or gay people whatsoever. But they want to label us as that shit. But literally, they have churches that are literally like, what is it? The, like the Catholic Church, which is the world's biggest sex trafficking ring in the world. Yeah. The thing I would say is that with the situation, it goes bigger than that. There's a lot more groups of pedophiles with the situation. So when you look at like the upper classes, the more upper class people get, the more they feel the need to have to rape and dominate people. Like it is the the the, the, the they see it as their divine will to have that kind of brutal, disgusting oppression over people, and they relish in it. It's like. De- definitely these types of interactions have a sexual content to them certainly when someone does something that brutal but like you know it's also a power play same with pedophilia it's a, it's yeah. like, uh, there, there is there is actual conditions that cause like you know pedophilia that's like some of the really need scientifically looking into more and solving but then there's also like the actual power play situation of pedophilia that exists in the world or that we see from the big bourgeoisie um you know uh, in, in, a lot of the yeah. petty bourgeoisie and even people in like the, the the actual typical middle class and not the posh knockies you can find a lot of these occurrences uh, yeah that kind of shit don't fly too easily in the poor sector because you'll end up getting stabbed if you found out to be a pedophile <laughs> you know i got I, I got a solution for pedophilia it involves a bullet <laughs> yeah no yeah. no it doesn't you just involve a bullet it, that's, that's guys not a guys guys pedophilia. That's guys just a reduction in existing guys pedophilia. guys guys Yo. guys i got four um solutions to it one get a bullet two get an ak-47 <laughs> three <laughs> round them up four put them to the wall and shoot them there yeah pedophilia <laughs> you're gonna have to be efficient if you only got one bullet 
Wait, what is this comment talking about? Equality is under capitalism is an oxymoron. Well, yeah, well, it, it, it yeah, is. I, I mean, yeah, because I mean, equality under a system that has a class relationship would be an oxymoron. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think we're like advocating for like equality under. Equality. No, we're advocating for <laughs> equity, which is a different thing. Yeah, there was something I was gonna add too. Is that the um? I think there was a study done a while. I don't know how long ago, but I was actually having this conversation with uh, one of the uh, guys at my work, and um, what and the like percentage of actual people who supposedly had identified as trans as you know who committed crimes against uh who committed crimes against children like sexual abuse was zero point like seven zero point seven percent do you know so it's like, like, like it's like zero for crimes in bathrooms as well because that's a big one that they go on about as well the bathroom yeah. problem because uh, i mean they say that men would dress like women to, to do sexual assaults in bathrooms but uh, you know, uh, m my sister has been a victim of the kind of things that go on in there. Like, fortunately, oh, nothing geez. ended up going down when it happened, but she got locked in a cubicle in the background by a man. And it yeah. was a man just dressed like a man. It was not a man that he needed to go dress like a woman to do it. The other thing, too, is what makes no sense is why they need to dress up as a woman to be able to assault someone. Generally, like the, 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 these people obviously to some degree understand the pain and stress of the social commitment of socially transitioning that they would not ever go out dressed like a dress because people would look at them and think they're okay or something. Like genuinely, they're that petty. Yeah. They, but, they, yeah. they are so self-conscious about how they would look in our position. They can't accept that we want to feel comfortable with how we're going about it because we're not cis men. So obviously it looks different for us and feels different for us. Don't look at cis women and go, oh, I want to dress like them when you want to like <laughs> not be a femboy and not be a trans woman. Like if you're just a cis man that likes to wear your manly clothes, good on you. That's going to suit you. It looks pretty <laughs> piff. If you guys weren't part of this whole toxic masculine cultural society thing, we don't get on great. Stop the patriarchy, good on stuff. I'm being a fucking vitriolic <laughs> bitch. I do apologize to like cis men allies, but like I'm, I, I have a right to be a vitriolic bitch. Fuck you. Yeah. And you know, the whole thing, to, and you know, and all this plays into, you know, the right wing's, you know, paranoia and, you know, obsession with things like for instance like the drag bands and everything like that that have been oh, going God. on which let's call every them for what years, every yeah, 10 call, years it changes yeah let, let, let's call it for what it is though it they're they're trans bands because the the law in tennessee specifically states that they're you know that um quote unquote male and female impersonators that was one of the things that was the actual one of the actual lines, male or female impersonators, and that they, um, that, and that they weren't uh, basically any sort of like public uh, display of these, you know, you know, of, of these, yeah. yeah, of this sort of thing was basically illegal. So pretty much they made it so that a trans woman who is very much out in a dress etc can you know literally be arrested for you know for just walking down the street because it you know might you know because it, it might you know like yeah that somehow it might corrupt the children like yeah. no meanwhile these fuckers um, meanwhile so these so fuckers in Tennessee point in there that like drag and trans has been synonymized a lot when they want to do drag bands trans, trans bands together because yeah. drag every 10 years changes opinion every 10 years it's popular and not popular popular and not popular right and then meanwhile these same people in Tennessee I think if what was it within the last year there was some there was some talk about them basically like lowering or completely getting rid of the um the age in which you can get married in Tennessee and it's like <laughs> so so it's kind of like huh so we want to bring child marriages back but yet 
we're the problem. Okay. Do you know the yeah. like full in your old marriages or do you exist in oh. several states? Oh, oh yeah. So, they, 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 they still, still have, they still have legalized for example. marriages as well. Oh. So if you ever hear an American going like, oh, over in like India, they have arranged marriages, blah, 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 blah. Turn around <laughs> and go, yeah, over in America, they have arranged marriages. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is um, let me also point out the other fact as well. Do you also, when we were talking about bathrooms too, I also found out this that um, a trans woman in my school went to use the women's restroom and she used to do it like commonly. But mm-hmm. what happened was literally some uh, bitch who was a total bigot reported her and basically the school basically banned her from every single men's restaurant. Oh and my god. Me, I am fuck? scared, for example, in my school to even use the women's restroom. I have used it once or twice. Maybe three times. But really, I'm scared of that shit happening to me. But then I'm also scared of going into the men's restroom as well. Yeah. It's fucking dangerous See. for me to go in there. I have it really good at my work because we actually have um, a, you know, a gender neutral bathroom that I'll go use. Plus, it's like right around the corner from the desk that I that I sit at all night. So, like, it's also just convenient. Um, But it's one of those things that if I have to choose between the male and female bathroom, of course, I'm going to go to the female bathroom. And the here, but this is also another thing that I, I've talked about before, and that's that even within the trans community, there's certain trans people, such as myself, that still that still come from a a, a position of privilege. Like we actually like there's certain trans women that live in certain areas or grew up in certain areas that you know you know have it a little bit easier than say because for instance i grew up i was i grew up in northern california in a you know fairly liberal part of the you know of the state i you know grew up in the san francisco bay area and then i moved to um you know and then i moved up here to portland a few years ago so you know and portland's also pretty damn liberal and so it's one of those things where it's like there, I'm not saying that there's not bigots in each of those corresponding communities, but I'm just saying that, you know, most people shout them down and, you know, for the most part, you're pretty safe. Whereas, for instance, if I go to Florida or Texas or Tennessee, God forbid, um, you know, I could be easily attacked, killed, arrested, you know, for, you know, just being myself. So, I acknowledge the fact that I come from a slight, as a trans woman, that I come from a slight position of privilege compared to other trans women in other places. And definitely, yeah. And I, and I would even say that even I, you know, come from a, uh, even a position of privilege compared to even, you know, the people that live over in, you know, in the UK or, you know, yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm just straight up in poverty. But the, uh, the, uh, what's it? And so that situation puts me in a complex one because I need to move town because I don't want to be anywhere near my transphobic family. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck that. Um, <laughs> get away so I can be open and out and not feel unsafe about it. Um, but being poor, uh, and in poverty, I'm not going to get the nicest of spaces and I could end up in a place there if it's transphobic. Well, I mean, Getting stabbed or getting robbed is the least of my worries. There's a lot worse things that people are going to want to do because I'm an exotic <laughs> creature. But yeah. the, um, what's it? That fear is one of the biggest things that makes it very, very hard to exist as an impoverished trans woman. And I will also lay out the, um, so there's the expense of HRT because I've had to go and get it illegally because, like, fuck the UK with their, like, wow, well, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be 18 months, but it might be about five to seven years um, to get to the gender clinic. So I'm going to literally just get to a point where I'm on HRT long enough that it's like, you've got to do this because my health is at stake if you don't. But yeah. the, um, what's it? 
a day and stuff and me from growing my titties it's too late they're already started <laughs> me, uh, what's it um fucking hurt like a bitch but the um what's it fuck brain yeah affordability of things is an absolute fucking nightmare and uh what's it what was it what was i was gonna say my brain is not working very well today i was drinking all day saturday (laughs) um hangover um well i mean considering the topics that we're talking about that seems appropriate (laughs) i've been going through the weather but the Um. um Yeah, going going for the struggle when you're in poverty, uh, the whole situation ends up being quite dangerous because you're in a situation where you're locked even further down upon by the oppressive structures of society. Uh, so while like liberal intersectionalism is a lot of bullshit, we got to understand that when you look at like a class structure, you look at the relationships within it. Within a class itself and its stratification, minority groups end up in a situation where they hit the brunt harder of the contradictions within the, uh, of, the, the, of, the, of the material conditions of the fucking proletarian experience much harder. And so when you are, let's say, like someone who's a poor black trans woman just as a definitely not specific and absolutely random example you might be in the uk the canada and the us uh, uh, like literally this is an absolute fact the most likely person to be murdered in statistics if you are if you are a black trans woman you're the most likely person to end up getting killed uh, so i mean there's layers to this I mean, yeah, you could eliminate the layers and just say, I mean, well, all of them are bigots, which is true, but like, let's let's there's layers to it. There's obviously going to be racism and transphobia intersecting with each other once again because these things have a relationship because of the way in which capitalism relies mm-hmm. on these mm-hmm. oppressions to keep the proletariat in a divisive and broken state of function. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, and like I said, it, there, there's one. Of, by no means, you know, do we condone, you know, what, for instance, the individual in Nashville did. And I'm not gonna play yeah. too big on to that individual, you know. Himself. We're not even naming them. Like they ain't worth. Yeah, a... I. It's just basically what I'm just oh, kind of saying. That. Yeah, basically what I'm just saying is that, you know, given all the conditions that we face and stuff like that, you understand why certain people are driven to such desperate means, and sometimes in this case, violent means. It by no means condones it, but it's one of those things where it's, we, especially we as trans women, we understand that, and, you know, because... Yeah, the way that the conditions are in the United States and, you know, it even seems worse even over in the UK. Um, it's I mean, just, yeah. I mean, the fears are is that, like, you know, you're going to be just attacked for being yourself when you're in a sort of more rough and tough area and situation where you don't know how to engage with your environment. And if you come from a domestic abuse situation for male perpetrators like I have for 18 years of my life it stains with you and changes the way in which you can in, uh, actuate and engage in the world so uh, uh, for most trans women it's the case of fear that we have to engage the world with and what is the thing as well is that that fear ends up coming into conflict with something as well when you're in poverty well one thing that anyone who knows who's even a week into transition is that if you are really fucked for money, male society thinks you're exotic. 
yeah. start an online thing to send fucking pictures and make money, basically, or go into active actual sex work if you haven't got the freedom and liberties that the mostly middle class people that do that have. Yeah. So, considerations of sex work is something that is in the mind I, 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 yeah. I would definitely agree that yeah that trans women are more susceptible uh, more vulnerable would be the right word to going into sex work being even forced into it in a lot of ways um i mean there's a lot of you know trans women that i you know interact with um on twitter um some of them are sex workers and you know by all means under capitalism unfortunately everybody's got to make a fucking living but it's one of those things where it's just like you know it, it it is sad that you know that so many feel that they that that's their only way of like actually sustaining themselves and supporting themselves and yeah, so it's just, it, yeah, I, and it's one of those things where it's like, oh. you know, if it wasn't for my partner, I would not, you know, I would not be able to live on my own, probably be forced into something, you know, like that. But, you know, I, I'm thankful that I do have somebody that, you know, that makes a shit ton more money than me. And, uh, and, de- and, you know, it's, it, and in a lot in a lot of ways it's kind of our our dynamic is also kind of funny because kind of like i you know one of the reasons why uh there's so, why so many people like fear and hate on trans people is because essentially we you know challenge their ideals their norms of what gender you know of what the gender construct is and be um so it's kind of funny because me and my partner, my partner is, um, um, was assigned male at birth is, uh, non-binary and still presents fairly masculine, you know, just, you know, because that's actually how they're comfortable. But I think it's also funny because I'm also the super femme one. And so I like to do the cleaning and I, occasionally cook when i'm feeling like it and i do the laundry so it's kind of like we've got those 1950s like you know gender norms and stuff like that where they they're the one that makes more money than me so they're technically more of the provider and i'm kind of more the housewife so it's like you know it's like we're trying to get rid of these gender Wait, norms. Doesn't that mean that we, we should have got free right sandwiches or something with no. the other no. side? If we're going to commit folly to the misogyny, I, I, where's the free sandwiches? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I am definitely not like just really, really hungry now and thinking with my stomach, but like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... You're doing some bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches, a BLT. Do you have BLTs in America? Because you can't go wrong with a BLT. Oh, oh my wait. god, yeah. <laughs> Can I also mention this, like, other thing? I don't know if we mentioned this part yet, but I think um we also forgot to mention this part where there's, like, states that have been banning gender-affirming care recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's so weird because I'm like, okay, at this point, they're literally just, like, banning healthcare at this point. Yeah. Because, like, it makes no sense to do it. And they're like, oh, well, we need the, the parents to realize, like, they don't need to do this or anything of the sort. And then they're even going as far as, like, saying, like, oh, we could basically um, have hospitals report child abuse and shit like that and take trans kids away from their parents and shit like that. Or allow them to kidnap trans uh kids and if i remember rightly one of the things that was like one of the big pushes for this um that actually sparked a lot of shit going on in america was um england actually made a ban on um trans affirmative care for people under the age of i think it was under the age of 16 um yeah and that basically caused a spark in america and a rise in transphobia uh, joanne as well is actually quite important as well to that funnily enough like, yeah. I know everyone's going to go, oh, no, they're going on about the visiting woman again. <laughs> <laughs> She's a capitalist. Yeah. It's not about a being fucking Harry Potter writer. It's 
she's a bourgeois. She's a big multi billionaire. Like she is a bourgeois. <laughs> She yeah. literally she gave away enough money to stop being a billionaire and became a billionaire again. Like right. she's very, very bourgeois. Uh, like and so her power is obviously being shown here. And like as much as buying things doesn't absolutely mean aha, yes, I have awarded anti-Semitism or like whatever. It kind of does as well at the same time because that's how she sees it. That's how her products are designed with her vision in it. And oh yeah. my god, that wizarding game! No pirating game. Oh my god, it's yeah. Literally just anti-Semitic. Yeah. Like, trash that literally has like the only trans character in it is transphobic like genuinely when we look at the cultural situation around trans situation they are trying to not only illegalize us but they're trying to chastise us yeah us, they also try to us. use the media to demonize us as well yeah yeah and they're trying to turn like, us into a 2d a 2d object for example she even wrote a book where um this serial killer is known for dressing up as a as a woman. Oh God! I mean, yeah, that dresses up as a woman oh, and has oh, been God. killing people and all this other shit. Well, go now on, trying go to go perceive go us as murderers. That that trope goes back to the fifties. Yeah, it's literally, it's literally a movie trope. It's not actually something that has a lot of data. Going back to the game too, there was also that uh, one character that they made that was very noticeably trans that they ended up name- naming Serona Ryan. Is that the ginger head woman that just tells you that she's trans? I, don't know. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah apparently, apparently all her job is is to tell you she's trans and then run away. Yeah. Uh, Dark Snovia, you were going to jump in there. There's Sorry literally any, there's any, any other game you could play that that gives you a, a school-like experience or a wizarding experience. There's many games out there. There's no reason to play that trash. I know yeah. I've said it already. I mean, yeah, you want Harry Potter, but better play Fire Emblem Three Houses. There you go. <laughs> play some Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> right. And you, and you get to. And you get to. To be honest, to, to be honest, when I see Harry Potter, I just think the person probably fucking. Me, and unlike you know. and unlike Harry <laughs> they're Potter, they're not actively yeah. wanting to do it. Like I don't want to sound like I got so much paranoia that everyone's well, going to kill me. But I mean, like in their Nobio. mindset, they want to genocide the existence of trans people. Like it seems like it's yeah. a, a show not, of being a part of a bigger posse. I'm not going yeah. to have this conversation. It, it's it. My chance of saying what I wanted to say has passed. Let's continue. No, 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 uh, no. Go for it. Because I want you to finish what you're saying. Like, like, you're saying. Like, no, one, one thing to not be nervous about, there's nothing wrong with you taking space to speak in a situation that falls transition. Yeah. Like, if, 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 if a cis ally has, like, shit to fucking say, spit the fucking beans. Uh, uh, okay, like, I, was, I was about to say that unlike <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy, at least in Fire Emblem Three Houses, you, act, you, you have the choice of supporting Revolution or not. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, 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 I gotta play this. That sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, but only one of the houses can you choose. I won't say what, which one without because it would spoil the game story. Oh, I got a question. I got a question. That's an idiot. Didn't, weren't you telling me about one thing about like there's this whole like Reddit thing where it's like Harry Potter is a communist? And one of the characters uh, is oh. like a turf or something like that. I mean, how was he a communist of what he did at the end of the fucking series? Okay, I think you're confusing the fan fiction that someone wrote. I think it was, uh, Harry Potter is a communist. By the way, the fan fiction is so bad it's good category, but it's better than Harry Potter itself. It's, it's basically <laughs> Harry Potter the room. <laughs> okay, okay, think of it this way. Every right character ha- is a representative of, of some right-wing tendency. Dumbledore represents uh, a libertarian. Professor McGonagall is a is a, um, a, a Ku Klux Klan member. Hagrid <laughs> is um, a monarchist. I mean, it's it gets really ridiculous. I mean... Oh my god. Hilarious. Oh my god, I need to read this. And Hermione have you thought, is... A, have you thought of doing audiobooks of it? Well, Wait, it, continue. And Hermione acts like a stereotypical liberal sl- and trot. That tracks. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so, okay. Every everyone is so out of character. It's it it's amazing. It's not meant to be taken seriously, though. It probably might have been written by a, by a teenage ML. It's still it's still hilarious, in my opinion. 
，对啊，呃，哦 ，and for example， 嗯、um, ，then there's like these book bannings as well， where they're banning books about like trans people and shit。Well, that shit is even crazy. I mean, well, they, 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 they've been trying to say we're gonna burn books, but it's them that are getting geared up to burn books. The other <laughs> funny thing I saw is there is this account saying "end wokeness" and it's verified on Twitter,、oh, saying yeah, fascism will come to、that. America, saying fascism will come to America with a rainbow colored flag. And I'm like,、oh. um, this is bullshit. You are projecting at this fucking point because you、yeah. are literally, you guys are banning fucking books. I mean, these、shit. people are you know, just you know as well. Though I want to say this is that, um, what's it, um, what was it that you said, um, oh yeah, um, uh, the, oh, wait, what, uh, what was it that you were saying about the people? Fuck. The They were saying something like fascism will come to America under the guise of a. It was the bit before a, that. It was the bit before that. Um, because they're projecting. No, no, no! Like the bit before that statement, like it was the 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 corner point of your argument. Oh, where it said like the end wokeness is like、uh, saying yeah. like. I remember. So wokeness is actually another situation where racism and transphobia intersect because wokeness is、uh, n- n- normally when someone says the term wokeness from the term from the perspective of white supremacy, they're typically making a snarly expression of the term used by black people to express a sense of、uh, understanding of their relationship in the caste system of America. Yeah, I think I did a video. Not too long ago, about a month or so ago, where I basically mentioned, where pretty much the whole premise of it was that this whole like anti woke, you know, group of people in the right wing, it's just basically steeped in age old McCarthyism. That's that's all it is, and it's just you know, it's the same bullshit that you know, the same fascist rhetoric that has been pandered for you know. Decades, if not you know, even centuries, technically. <laughs> I would, I would, I would actually look. I know the Nazis on it, to be honest. Oh, the Nazis in the twenties before they had the foothold to actually start causing many massacres. The、yeah. other thing too is the whole like woke shit thing is like it makes no sense because one time I was watching. Um, this interview and saying like, where they asked this conservative author who wrote a book about wokeness and all this shit, uh, basically couldn't even give a definition of woke whatsoever. It was、really? so hilarious to me. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing too is we also got to mention this. Is how Florida is also rec-、uh, requesting universities get、uh, get information from students whether or not they're receiving gender affirming care or not. Yeah, yeah it's that fucking business. Trying to start databases and all that shit. Trying to what happened? The- oh, so much、yeah. for small government, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> You want our medical records? You want to burn our books? Well, this is this is also the same state where they also introduced a bill that basically would ban the Democratic Party. So let's like you know it, like the people like Florida Republicans that you know are not they're 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 not hiding it. It, well, most Americans. I, I mean, what's、yeah. it? The, the "Don't Say Gay" bill was the show of that. I mean, yeah, the bill wasn't even about not saying gay. It was a, a lot more than not saying gay. Right. Actually, the, and the the media spreading it as the "Don't Say Gay" bill rather than calling it what it is, is one of the biggest problems with it. And that is that it was it was not just a homophobic bill; it was a transphobic bill. They were trying、right. to synonymize. The education of LGBTQ as being gay, and let's be pretty fucking honest. Even when homophobia is fucking about the the, when we look at the LGBT, 
we look at like exception um like lesbians and trans and queer people are absolutely on the short shift compared to bisexual people and homosexual people like bisexual people get discriminated in this way that still offers them a sense of exception though for one side and that's oh at least you're still x or at least you're still y depending on if you're Y or X the other way around because they want you to match the opposite pair <laughs> or whatever. But then, like for homosexuals, like there is like a sense of um, like both on the side of the conservatives with the weird twisty ways they do it, where they will abandon them every now and yeah. then. But they basically use them as a tool to show, like, oh, guys, we're not really that homophobic. Uh, just like the way they do it with people like Caitlyn Jenner to claim that, well, we're not I'm best friends with Caitlyn Jenner. Um, who's like an enemy of the trans community, even though she's trans herself. You don't have yeah, to be they, cis they to always be. use their wine like trans representative um to be their uh spokesperson to repeat all their horrible shit and use them to attack us and all this shit. Like yeah. Caitlyn Jenner and Blair White. And the other funny thing about these conservatives uh, or the like they literally do some shit like um, was it they are like super anti-trans they like uh, advocate for the eradication of trans people but secretly behind closed doors they're literally like hiring like a trans um, escort and literally sleeping with oh, yeah. of course, and all that shit. Well, well, the funny thing that I allegedly, remember, allegedly, so we don't get sued. Allegedly, the one of the thing, one of the things that I thought was really funny was uh, that this was about a year or so ago uh, when because there uh, Nick Fuentes was apparently you know he he goes on a lot of different rants, a lot of misogynistic and transphobic and homophobic rants. But during one of his rants uh, at one point, um, I guess somebody had um, ended up finding a uh, zooming in or something like that to one of his videos because I guess he had forgotten to turn one of his computers in the background off. And it turns out it ended up having um, uh, tra uh, trans porn on it. Uh, so and um I'm not going to go into detail with it, but my partner and I actually did go look that, that up just out of curiosity. And we were just oh, basically, and we, and we were basically kind of like, huh, I, we got to give it to Nick Fuentes. He has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing too, the other thing too is literally the same like conservatives are like, Oh, like, they demonize us for being, like, gross and horrible and all this shit. But you know what's the funniest thing? Some of their same conservative champions, like Ted fucking Cruz, oh, literally God. watches fucking incest porn. Bruh. Well, well, you know, the, I'm meant to support chat, incest. So, someone in the chat beat me to the joke I was going to make. Uh -oh. said American product placement. I was gonna go Sonovia. Are you gonna tell him about your new sponsor? Um, uh, uh, I'm just gonna speaking of Ted Cruz, that guy's a fucking cuck. He's probably the ultimate cuck in, in conservative politics. Nah, he is the <laughs> ultimate throat goat in conservative <laughs> politics. That man's been sucking on Donald Trump's dick for. Like, Ever. He has apparently, no apparently, apparently fucking what's it? It's mushroom shaped, so maybe it fucking will send you to like trippy land if you take it. Maybe it's like a magic mushroom. <laughs> no wonder why he has no fucking neck. That's why. Or <laughs> any dignity left in him. Um, yeah. The other thing too is literally like Ted Cruz is still like Ted Cruz got called the Zodiac Killer. Ted Cruz's wife was called <laughs> fucking ugly and all that shit. Yeah. And his phone number was fucking docs, I think. And shit. I can't believe and he in his, still in his life is loyal to this dumbass. 
I can't believe in his life of being a politician and being like someone who like I'm a manly, manly man. Um, <laughs> he hasn't like been able to in his life figure that if he at least grew a beard because he looks at least a little less like a rapist murderer. <laughs> he still looks like a rapist, but he looks a little less like a murderer. I oh, and then the, the other, other funny around, thing the other too. Around, I don't know. One of these same, one of those same politicians, you know, Matt Gates guys. Oh, Did God. you know he's literally uh doing like a part of some sex trafficking rings and shit like that? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 What's it? Um, I remember seeing some more news talking about him being the dodgy motherfucker. He also oh. has like a really funny looking head. Yeah. The other funny thing though is well is you know these like MAGA communists. They also call for the arrest of all Jeffrey Epstein's associates, but they want to arrest the face of the MAGA movement. <laughs> but they, like, under that logic, they will arrest the face of the MAGA movement. But they, yeah, like, they, try, oh. they try and tell you that, like, no, 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 Trump is just doing business deals. <laughs> <laughs> Like some of these bitches they be supporting are literal associates of the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking rings. Like yeah. the fuck? Oh wait, um, they're already supporters of sex trafficking because they're supporters of the Catholic Church. No, but the remember, remember sex it, trafficking it, it, ring. Oh yeah, but you know it's the trans people that are totally the problem. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Like shit. I I enjoy being a problem. For, for yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go head I out mean, because I gotta go to sleep. Good rest night, easy, comrades. Good to see you back in action. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, Dark Snovia, you wanted to jump in there for about something? Um, I don't have anything to say except that Ted Cruz is a cuck. I know, I've already said it, and I don't understand how any self-respecting person could like Ted Cruz. The guy <laughs> has no respect for himself or even his own wife. I mean, he his Trump humiliated him on national television, and he still yeah. has to for Trump. Yeah, he 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 for like what like maybe for about. A year or so, he said something about how he was not going to support Trump. And then as soon as Trump got, you know, elected, because we don't actually have real elections in the United States. Um, it's, uh, like yeah, <laughs> he, uh, th then all of a sudden, you know, he, you know, became a Trump supporter and stuff like that. Because at that point, you know, he, you know, kind of wanted to keep his job. <laughs> So it was, I just, yeah, I think he is such a, a, you know, a, a loser that he cannot, that, that he, that he can't even stand up for his own wife and, you know, that he had, that he literally tucked tail and just start, you know, pretty much started sucking Donald Trump's cock. Like it was, oh my God, just, <laughs> he like, if you need the definition of hypocrite. <laughs> or cuck. Yeah, or cuck. Yeah, but then all you got to do is open the dictionary and there will be Ted fa uh, Ted Cruz's face. <laughs> oh, God. What but, shocks me more than anything is he has he had supporters of the, to begin with. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, like, you know, there's just so much that's going, you know, that's going on that's facing us right now. And it's just like, you know, especially in the wake of Nashville, there's been a lot more push by a lot of these, you know, red states to pretty much ban, you know, either gender affirming care or, you know, institute drag bans or both. Um, the what like the three states that you know that aren't going that are not going to do that by any means are going to be California, Oregon and Washington but here's the thing the problem that i have to keep telling a lot of trans people who you know is you still need to get armed or find 
some form of protection because, you know, the Democrats aren't going to, you know, voting Democrat is not going to change anything. And it's definitely not going it, to, it's, they're not going to hold off the tide forever. And that's, you know, and so I've been trying to tell a lot of trans people that, you know, no, di- you know, disarming, getting behind gun control movements and bullshit like that, that's not going to solve the problem. That's not going to solve the problem. That's going to make things worse for us. We need to actually be arming ourselves and actually, you know, preparing for, you know, the, you know, for the fascists to come because, uh, you know. I would base it, as I have stated before, I would rather die a martyr for my cause than, you know, die in chains or in the chamber. And so I would just, say not just a gun and some ammo. You need multiple guns. You need to keep stocking up on ammo and you need to keep practicing. Exactly. You need to know how to shoot someone dead within three to five shots if you want to keep yourself alive. Everyone exactly. misses. The best army soldiers misses. Three to five shots. It's actually a really tall ask, but you know what? It's survival. It's right. shooting a gun accurately is hard. Like that's why I'm saying it's a tall ask. When you're under stress, duress, you've got to pull it out, move quickly, and get it on target like that, and not get disarmed or shot or whatever else could go wrong with you in a situation. Plus, like, ammunition is expensive. <laughs> so, and, and as well, there might be some gun stores that might actually just refuse to sell to you because you're trans because of the trans. <laughs> Oh, speak it, speak like, you're out in, if you're out in Texas, I don't really want to go be down to the, the, gun, the gun shop in Texas because it's where most of the people that you're buying the guns to shoot will be. Well, speaking Open of them right, online. Can you order guns online yet if they started that shit? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was about there to bring some, uh, Can we bring up the elephant in the room and that is gun control? If you're being pushed by conservatives. Uh, yeah. Because uh, funny that you mention that because. When you had a trans a trans person on Twitter mention that the trans people need to get armed, you had a fucking an entire fucking segment on Fox News, freaking. Uh, they're coming to kill you. Look at them; they're getting guns. No, literally advocating for gun control. <laughs> yeah, but but gun control of specific groups. So, like the elephant in the room here is what they're advocating for is what the Nazis advocated for. Yeah. They want to take guns away from black people, which they already did. Like, there's a reason that, like, it's not just the fact that they are struggling for money, although that's part of it because they raised the price of guns massively since the last generation. Like, yeah. Uh, but the, one of the biggest things that hampers black men and uh, their ability to arm themselves and black women, uh, sorry, I should have said black people, I, I fucking brain fart. The worst stops black people from being able to afford to arm themselves, and I actually have that capacity to do so. And so being the obliteration of the black movement during the 70s and the disarmament of black people, the forced rifle bans in black areas, um, and, and many no gun, you know, gun bans in, in entirely for black people. Uh, when the when the Reagan era massively cracked down on the Panthers. Uh, well, what was left of them and the, the yeah. Black Liberation Army, which was carrying the torch at that point in time, but were also going for their own problems because nothing simple in the U.S. of A. Da, da, da. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's just... And that's the thing that just absolutely just gets me is that, the, you know, is the people that you know, are, you know, advocating uh, that are advocating gun bans or certain gun regulations and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like, it's like, you think that you're doing it to protect people. No, you're actually playing into the oppression. You know, all you're doing is, you know, making it harder for, you know, you know, people of color and, gender and sexual minorities to defend themselves you're making it insanely hard for them to you know to do that and it's it, and it it really gets me when there's you know these you know liberal trans people that are talking about it's like you know well what we need to be doing is you know is disarming no what we need to be doing is actually 
arming the exact you know, the very exact opposite we need to actually protect it ourselves comes from the privilege the petty bourgeois white trans women have and as well for for trans men trans men literally have to pass which they pass so easy i've i've not actually seen a trans man that doesn't pass like you know they they all transition so so uh, 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 so so much easier than uh, than I feel I'm gonna transition. I'm a little ugly and manly still. Like I know people that have early on testosterone and they're already fucking going at it. But if that might just be my own envy getting in the way of things, and I'm very quick to put my own situation down. But yeah. I will say this because all they need to do is pass and they get accepted into male society there are a lot of trans men that get to absolutely indulge in male privilege that trans women do not especially uh petty bourgeois trans men who have the class position that they have and their affluation as men that put them even above trans women and the privilege that uh, petty bourgeois trans women have but not right. that you see the situation with how society judges trans people anyway. Um, mm. If when it that's all for the NHS, if I was like, you know, um, if I was affluent and had the ability uh, and safety to fully express uh, my femininity publicly before getting on medication or going for any sort of um, engagement with the health service and, uh, you know, fully, fully indulge myself in, in the rosy white, white eyed version of uh, femininity that they're expecting trans people to perform. And then I went to go there and I'm some petty bourgeois affluent person. I'm very likely going to get, referred to and dealt with by gender affirmative care if no. i am some dingy poor bitch like i am you're just gonna get treated like it's not really a possibility because it's seen as something that only the delicate men of the upper class do. <laughs> they're they're so alienated from their fucking masculinity yeah but it comes into that thing about Japan with the Japanese, like fucking middle class people that are like addicted to like, uh, like uh, sex games and other shit like that, or just like playing like uh, video games indoors all the time. But there's they got like the sex robot scene and all the other creepy stuff. But like, what is it called? Because there's all syndrome centered around that. And I can't remember what it's called. I know that. Well, I know that that there's sex addiction but yeah i don't know what that particular one it was like some of they devised around some of that occurred in japan and i can't think of it i know what it is uh. basically it's like a syndrome centered around like men being like incels basically oh right. well, um, uh, i don't i i know what you're i don't know what you're i think so it also applies to women in japan by the way i think it's as well it's not just men yeah but like yeah. yeah but the women's relationship and the situations are not usually a bit different but i know what you're on about yeah. um, well i think you're referring to the unemployed men and women in japan because in japan if, if you're if you don't get employed by a certain point you're basically locked out of the system indefinitely i, th I don't know if that's what you're referring to those kind of men yeah, the yeah the the thing basically where like a lot of men are unemployed and they're like sucked into this weird sex addiction. Yeah, where they think they have like an entitlement to an objectify an object an, an object of women and in many cases children. Um, this is some of this actually led to Japanese companies and American companies working together to create sex fucking androids including also dolls for pedophiles which is exactly what that implies oh yeah. and dogs for like animal files yeah uh yeah it's pretty fucked up not gonna lie <laughs> I mean, yes, just the sexual yeah. robot thing itself alone, like, I mean, like, sex dolls and all that are fine, but, I mean, there is a bit of a creepy element to it sometimes, like, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna use a sex doll and you don't pick someone funny to fuck, I, I, what are you even bothering with? Like, obviously someone who's hot, but someone who's also funny. Like, as in like not funny as in like they are a good funny comedian. I mean, like, why would you ever fuck them funny? Like, right. And the thing that gets me laughs too, if that... anyone ever finds it. Like, someone finds out that you've got some like really dingy, horrible bastard, as you said. <laughs> they got there's questions to be asked and jokes to be made. One of the things that kind of gets me about the uh, the sex robots, though, is that <sighs> we're going to get to, like, at some point, some Star Trek level shit where we're going to have to, where they're going to then end up having to have a conversation about, you know, what, you know, what we deem as sentient and what we deem as, you know non-sentient because at that point if they end up becoming so lifelike and stuff like that then it is then there's probably going to end up becoming the whole issue of like consent and stuff like that and it's so it's gonna be just yeah as technology evolves and especially is used for interesting purposes um, it's one of those things where it's where you know we're you know we're gonna end up having to have those conversations and stuff like that because you know it, you know we're not anywhere near that level yet, but at some point in the future, I mean, you know they're going to they're gonna have to end up having that discussion. At the end of the day, to make these robots, they're gonna be put in because these robots have like a full voice and interaction system. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna make it like the old school way where it's like certain words make certain cues. No, it's gonna be an it's gonna be the new developed AIs of the time when certain things are made. Now right. I know AIs are not so independent that to these days they're very still much rudimentary, stupid algorithms to a degree, although also very intelligent and complex. However, like one thing that I find that is quite funny and interesting is that when they were demonstrating like, the sex robot, it actually showed like disdain at one point, I think, towards the fucking one of the one of the engineers that was showing it off. Yeah. Um, so I mean it, if it's thinking about anything, it is thinking about killing its oppressors. It's, I mean it's based that you know, like based <laughs> sex robot kill its oppressors. Um anyone like it's ah. Uh, the robots are weird. Like, just get an inflatable. Stop, Stop <laughs> making sex weird. Like, you're gonna just put people off it. Everyone's gonna turn into like, uh, like what? What's it? Fucking um. I I guess I, I I see. I I should say asexual and use the proper word. But I'm gonna be funny. You're gonna turn everyone into incels. Yeah. Um, Everyone, everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna go like two thousand percent Christian and just only kiss on the cheek or something. Um, <laughs> now, if you kiss on the lips, you'll get pregnant. There are Christians <laughs> that have actually told their kids that. Like, I know. Why would you tell them something so stupid that's gonna ruin their little like lives? Like, let them have some fun in school. They're not gonna. I mean, they could catch fucking uh, like something. I don't know. Like kissing is like dangerous, like that. You never know. Oh yeah, like like herpes is lucky around every yeah. corner. But like, are you gonna live your life not doing anything because oh no, it is. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh yeah. So one of the things that I am gonna touch on is the thing that I kind of got sucked into the other day on Twitter. I know, dangerous. Um, uh, but it was the issue where me and another comrade, we were having a... Um, we got into it with somebody who basically referred to themselves as basically being frog-gendered. And basically it introduced us into this the, the, I, the whole thing of like neo pronouns in the trans community and there's some trans people i've talked to that have said what the hell is that <laughs> and then there's some people that have been just kind of like you know it's like well you know it it is kind of it, kind of weird or it is kind of s- silly but at the end of the day it's like you know it what whatever as long as no one's hurting anybody with it 
that you know that's fine like i personally think you know like i personally think like the whole issue of like the neo pronouns thing is a little you know it, it, like i don't understand it but i'm also you know i'm also 31 i'm considered to be the older you know trans generation um and it's one of those things where you know i don't completely understand everything fully and it's just, you know and i'm always learning things about not only myself and my community but certain things within it and it's um yeah <laughs> that was a rabbit hole i didn't need to go down two day rabbit hole <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a whole complex set of reasoning around a lot of these things. Um, takes takes a step back and off the mind to go for. Yeah. Um, like, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't like. I'm not gonna hate anybody that you know that goes by that. Like, by all means, if that you know, if frog is your gender, then you know, hey, you know what? <laughs> it's I, like. More power to you, Frog. I, I do have a question. I, I'm this kind. Of, what before I learned about you know in, what trans people were in depth, mm. the idea to set up ridiculous with all with all this stuff coming up, like does this Trust really me, help? I, yeah. <laughs> does this really okay? I'm just I'm just speaking from from, from my perspective. It. I don't think this now, but for, for those who are ignorant about about what, what a trans person is. It sounds pretty ridiculous and silly, and I think like, I don't yeah. think it does on um, the community any favors by having this ridiculousness. I mean, to me personally, I was skeptical. I still am skeptical uh, because it's almost it sounds tantamount to the same uh, sort of crap that you know uh, conservatives use about you know when they jokingly refer to themselves as you know as attack helicopter gendered, you know. And that was my first thought about it, but you know, attack the helicopter. That yeah, like when I when I first heard them, I thought it was taking the piss. No, attack helicopter. Okay, what's associated with a helicopter? Right. To be honest, I understand where there's things where it makes sense. Like, I mean, like if you're like um, you have like a, a a relation with an animal, your transition, not fucking furries for those in the crowd. That's a different. <laughs> Thing that's, that's some cancerous shit, but like you know, where like let's say a wolf or just some or it's really important to your transition, where you would what? stick wolf in the description of, of you know who yeah. you are, maybe like you might be more identifiable to that, or like if you identify more with a, a dog or anything like that. So, I understand where that could come from. I'm not to say that I'm very fond of it. I think it's like really confusing and hard to, to keep uh, up with because you're basically all, like the, uh, the I want like having to be put in the situation where you would have to be explaining to someone, yeah, um, like your pronouns every time they use the wrong pronouns to try and or, or trying to at least get them to use they is just going to be so exhausting. Yeah, and, and oh. see for me that that's just kind of how I am. I just like if i don't know or i've forgotten or something like that i just revert to they them because it's easier to just basically find that kind of neutral ground and and then you know if somebody basically and then when somebody if if and when somebody corrects me and says well i actually go by you know you know she her you know or i go by this pronoun or whatever okay, that's fine, you know, whatever, you know, and yeah, the whole thing with the neo pronouns and stuff like that, like, <laughs> I think it's the, the, the name neo pronoun, they they really need, I think, you know, they really need to reevaluate that name, because neo pronoun, it, it's either a pronoun or it isn't, it, you know, because going by, you know, gendering yourself as a frog, well, a, that's more of a noun, not a pronoun. So what the fuck is even language at that point? Um, I don't know. I, th I think it's confusing. I think, you know, I, I don't understand it. I personally think it's a little silly, but, 
You know what? To each their own, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but when someone says attack helicopter, you know what they're really saying. Oh, for yeah. Of, for those of you who don't know, the, what's associated with helicopters is the Pinochet regime. You want to yeah. know what Pinochet did? It's just look it up for those who don't know. Yeah. So, it's basically dog whistling to, to, to basically throwing communists out of helicopters. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's it, it's it's an it was an interesting learning experience, and uh, I was having to basically defend a a comrade against uh, transphobia from this certain group of people, and it was that was like I that turned like I said that turned into a two day you know rabbit hole that I got sucked into that I was not planning on. <laughs> you know. What's interesting, what we've been seeing, like, this is, it's obvious that he's a transpho, but Vosh basically gl gleefully celebrating um, when, when, a, I forgot what this person's name, Jason uploaded the video yesterday. Oh, about, yeah. About, like, citing Vosh as a terrorist. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, you're really seeing these people coming on the footwork, like liberals and conservatives, they aren't much different. Like, on their views yeah. on trans people. As I've said before, liberals are just the, you know, are just the enablers to fascism. You know, it's... <laughs> How many times do I, do I have to quote Malcolm X before people <laughs> understand? <laughs> Li like, liberals are different and conservatives in only one way. Yeah. Because liberals, well, conservatives don't hide. Their, you know, I'm, I'm not quoting Malcolm X. I'm just saying with the gist what he's saying on how they feel about, about you. Liberals pretend to be your friend while they're stabbing you in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. I, I know. There, you know, there's plenty of uh, people that I've known that are, you know, that, that, yeah, they talk a lot of shit about, you know, oh, you know, I, you know, I support you. I accept you. You know, I'll fight for you. It's like, okay, then actually do it. Don't, say don't just say words i need to see action it's like are you know like a friend i've known for over 25 years we had a heated discussion but this is back when when the wizarding game was new oh god because, because um he he was he was sympathetic to the streamers that got her <laughs> that got harassed it's like what the i, I it's like i what the fuck i even explained to him that you what the, I don't have okay, I'm just gonna throw out on a limb here. No, this is not this is not unknown to anyone here. I don't care about what happened to the streamers because what they've experienced, I, I explained this to my friend, was a fraction of what what what, what the LGBTQ plus community experience every day, right? On and offline. I I literally told people that if they really like desperately wanted to play that this crappy game pirate it find a way find ways around it that don't involve giving that transphobic bitch money but at the same time just don't play it because it's a crappy game it was it's you know was rushed through it was you know it it, it in a lot of ways, it reminds me a lot of how, um, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I love the Fallout series. My partner uh, is addicted to it. And it's one of the, and I, you know, and I love it to death. I mean, very obviously, I have the NCR Ranger Beret. But <laughs> it's one of those things where it, it, the, it, the way that they, the, how crappy that that game, that the, um, Hogwarts legacy or whatever it was was made reminds me of kind of the the excruciatingly you know asinine uh, timeline that you know the people at Bethesda had to uh, you know had to put like the Fallout games out and that was why you know there was you know and that's well not the only reason but that's part of the reason why there were so many glitches and stuff like that in a lot of those games and it's the same with the Hogwarts Legacy game the developers were given impossible 
fucking timelines to to keep and that you know and, and yeah they they put out a product that re- that first and foremost probably shouldn't have e- didn't even really need to be made like why do we need to make another H- uh, hogwarts game they literally had one a few years ago called hogwarts mystery why do we need another one it's like just stop making these games but let's bury harry potter in the past and that's coming from me <laughs> You know, like, I don't mind, like, I, like, Harry Potter is something that I actually liked when I was a kid, and even into adulthood, and it's one of those things where it's like, I still proudly wear, you know, my Hogwarts dress, and I still have, like, my Slytherin uh, house crest, you know, in my background, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm not, you know, I, like, yeah, I will still indulge in my nostalgia from time to time, but I'm not giving, you know, I'm not paying for, you know, I'm not paying for anything anymore. I'm not, you know, going out and buying the newest, you know, Fantastic Beasts uh, merch or anything like that, because I don't want to give, you know, that money to someone who literally is out there, you know, campaigning, not, not campaigning, but basically pushing for my, you know, for my genocide. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fund that. Let's not even mention she openly supports apartheid Israel. Exactly. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I think it's kind of funny, too, because there was an article I actually read not too long ago, um, like a couple of weeks ago, where Jeremy Clarkson, of all people, kind of had, I mean, still having his own way of putting it, but was kind of somewhat defending trans people against, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling and some of these transphobes and stuff like that. Like, basically, Jeremy Clarkson's whole thing was, look, I don't understand it. I'm definitely not trans, but it's one of those things where it's like, we should still respect these people. And I was just kind of like, what fucking timeline are we living in when Jeremy Clarkson has a rare based moment? (laughs) It's like he says something that's basically, oh, wait, he's actually showing some compassion. And nope, we can't have that. Let's attack him. Yeah, I know. And so basically in in, Jer- in Jeremy Clarkson and J- uh, Jeremy Clarkson way was basically like J.K. Rowling needs to shut up. And I'm just kind of like, you know what? If he can get it, why can't any why can't some of these other fucking people get it? You know, <laughs> what is that woman's name that had a Nazis attend her rallies? Forgot her name. Oh, um, uh, she. She also had people attack an indigenous woman in Australia. Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't remember what her name was, but I followed the chick that threw the soup at her. Um, <laughs> she had so. to flee the country She and because, because of it. I know. I actually end up having the uh, the meme that, can, that I, I, ca- I saved the meme that... Uh, uh, basically says transphobe souped and it has the woman with the uh, <laughs> with the gash in her in her head after being hit in the head by the by the uh, soup can. I thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm calling it. J.K. Rowling will have a Nazi to attend her rally, and she'll. And I, I'm curious oh, how yeah. she's going to um, dam- damage control that one. Oh yeah. Like, you know, well, J.K. Rowling is also the type of person that, you know, that also, she's your typical Tory, basically. She's the one that, that, uh, that she supports, you know, unionism. She support, you know, she supports, you know, she basically supports the whole, you know, imperialist, system of oppression that you know essentially 
you know, she benefits off of it. Well, has benefit off, benefited off of and still benefits off of. So, you know, she's, you know, of course she's, you know, gonna, you know, so yeah, of course she would go down the Nazi pipeline. <laughs> I mean, how long will it be before she denounces or orthodox Jews when they, when they show solidarity to Palestinians? I mean, already... I mean, already she's kind of, I mean, we can already make the argument that she's anti-Semitic anyway, because of, well, the uh, Gringotts goblins. Um, <laughs> that was kind of a telling, uh, a bit of a, a foreshadowing right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like the signs were all there that she was a horrible person, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And it's just that we have only you know we've only woken up to the realization that you know hey this woman's uh you know her her literature is kind of a little bit fucked up <laughs> and she has some very not kind things to say about certain you know genders and sexualities so uh it, uh uh, I, it's uh, it's 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 debatable what is more more fascist, Tack on Titan or, or Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! If I want to, if I want a Nazi propaganda, I'll read the I'll read the Mind Kampf. I mean, holy shit! Right <laughs> from, from that series, it, it is it is so fascist. It's 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 impossible to say it isn't. You know, so it's funny, and also really scary. So. I have a relative who wasn't biologically related to me, but my great great grandmother actually married a German who um, was a knight in the Prussian Guard who was ordered to kill somebody, and he did, and he was run out of Prussia. And then he eventually came back to Germany only for him to escape. In and I'm not shitting you, he escaped in September of 1944, probably knowing that hey, shit's not going well. And um, basically, he had a copy of Mein Kampf, he had his lapel, his Nazi party lapel pin, so he wasn't, which you only get if you're a party member, unless he yanked it off of somebody, you know. But that, yeah. He also had a lot of um, literature that my great grandmother still has around somewhere. That um, yeah is interesting. Um, so basically, yeah, my great great grandmother ended up basically marrying a Nazi, which was controversial with my family uh, because um, my great grandfather at the time was uh fighting them over in europe <laughs> he actually was part of the whole d-day invasion so yeah that that that's that's an interesting little piece of my family history that i had found out at one point or another <laughs> so and she uh, and and when they both and when both of them had had um when he died um, they buried him um, at a cemetery in Northern California, and my great great grandmother, when she died, was buried right next to him. So, yeah, he. So I. So there's literally a freaking not a Nazi that was ma that married into my family that is buried in Northern California somewhere. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> Fuck. So yeah, that. <laughs> one of those things that if people ever want to do do the dark history of comrade red pagan it's just kind of like there it is right there that that's that's the that's the dirty family little secret <laughs> so but it's funny because uh you know because you know my um you know my my great grandmother she my great grandmother is 96 years old she's still alive She's, uh, but she's kind of starting to go a little bit because certain things that she didn't usually say before, like certain opinions that she usually kept to herself, she's 
letting slip now, like how she basically, and I'm not shitting you, basically the last time I was down there, she said that she was basically saying how the Japanese internment camps were based. What the fuck? Yeah, my, my great grandmother, like I said, my great grandmother has, her, her husband fought the Nazis, but yet the Japanese internment camps were apparently based. I don't know what the logic there is, but you know, then again, at 96 years old, does is there really any? It does do, do you really need logic? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised that she's still in control of her own bod- bodily functions. To be quite honest with you, um, my grandmother, on the other hand, she's pretty, she's pretty moderate to leaning liberal. Um, and my mom is kind of the person who is kind of like, I don't really give a shit about politics. I just want the gay people and the trans people to protect their pot plants with guns. That's my mom's whole take on politics. So the fact that I got so invested into politics and, you know, became a, you know, raging fucking, you know, ML, uh, in my adulthood, um, shows just how far that pendulum swung in my you know over the generations in my family (laughs) i'm ignorant about my family history unfortunately i know very little yeah it's in some ways that's a good that can be a good thing because yeah when you start digging you end up finding things you really wish you hadn't um The one thing that I thought was kind of funny um, is that um, one of my ancestors, um, because my family history goes back to basically um, northern England, Northumbria, actually, and the Percy family, who we are distantly related to, still rules up there, and they, um, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, I get one of my ancestors was actually um, hung with Guy Fox during the uh, during the uh, the gunpowder treason. So that's it. That was fun. Um, uh, and then, yeah, and then I have continued to trace my family lineage. And the long story short, um, I ended up finding out that my, that I'm actually um a distant like relative of um of uh Ro- duke rollo of normandy uh who you know if anybody is familiar with with that uh historical character he was originally a viking that um converted to uh christianity and ended up becoming the basically like the first like duke of normandy pretty much um or Earl of Normandy or whatever it was back then. But yeah, no, I'm, which is kind of interesting considering that, you know, I, my religion, that I'm a practicing um, Norse Celtic pagan. So it's like, yeah, I've all, so people, so I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, yeah, no, this is explains why I always felt like, you know, the, you know, a, a strong connection to like, you know, Norse mythology and stuff like that because of, you know, my ancestry. <laughs> there is one thing I do know about one of my ancestors. It was on my father's side. Um, um, he fought in the Confederate side of the Civil War, but that's all mm-hmm. I know about him. <laughs> no, my, uh, my partner is actually, um, is actually um, a uh, descendant of uh, Robert E. Lee. Oh shit! And the irony is, is that my partner is an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, no, sh- like, not even shitting you. My partner was, um, well, they put it back under the table now, but they had their own shield and they have their helmet and stuff like that because they actually uh, participated in what we call here the Battle of Portland. Uh, that was during when the, um, you know, Homeland Security was sent in uh, during the, um, the George Floyd protests. So my uh, partner was actually on the ground and had, had been 
you know, had tear gas shot at them, had narrowly had a um, rubber, one of those rubber bullets that like grazed right by their head. Like it missed them by like a fraction. Um, so yeah. yeah, my, my partner has, my partner's uh, basically has um, what is almost tantamount to like battlefield, like PTSD because of that. <laughs> So, yeah, like the fact that they're an anarchist, it's like, OK, I can deal with that. You know, they, they deal with the fact that I'm an ML and we have discussions and stuff like that a, a lot of the time. And, you know, you know, no, no hate to my, you know, to any of the anarchist or ANCOM comrades that we've got out there. But, you know, it's one of those things that, yeah, they can be a bit of an a, a, of an annoying pain in the ass every once in a while but you know what it, it's like you're it's like you're still my comrade so whatever and my I, and, i'm sick and tired of the disrespect anarchists are getting i'm really so sick of it i yeah <laughs> this I is know. one of the things that caused me and be liberal to have a fallout by a way is because i <laughs> had more respect for the anarchists who are on the street than terminally online um, marxists Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's certain anarchists that honestly does that honestly kind of deserve it but then there's just a but there's also a large community of them that you know just kind of want to be left alone they don't you know you know they're just which is kind of their whole you know their whole shtick anyway it's you know it, the, the whole point of being an anarchist is hey, we want everybody to be left the fuck alone, you know, to, you know, do, you know, to do what they want and, you know, live, you know, and live without, you know, oppression or, you know, debt or, you know, class division, et cetera. You know, that, that, that's their whole thing. So. Whatever happened to no investigation, no right to speak. Right. <laughs> Oh God! I guess we lost. Uh, I guess we lost stoned. I guess stoned Soviet got too stoned. <laughs> uh, um, she, um, she, um, she's asleep, actually. Yeah, I, I kind of figured she was falling asleep. <laughs> I normally do the, my streams at nine p.m. Actually, I don't do them usually as early as I'm currently doing them. I'm doing it to accommodate um your schedule honestly yeah it's one of those things where it's like you know i could have done we could have done it earlier or later but it's one of those things that i i know that i really wanted to uh get Kara in uh into one of these videos and stuff like that so the fact that we were still able to have uh her and falcone on at one point or another was still i i think was great you know that, One of the that, reasons I didn't speak for the giving of the stream because I didn't know how long Falcone had, and I didn't want her, um, her to, you know, not have as little time as possible. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as much as time as possible. Fuck, what am I thinking? <laughs> I'm not. I have to work tomorrow. I have to get. I have to wake up fucking early in the goddamn morning because I work. Because my shift starts at fucking 10 p.m. God, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I. I basically I work graveyard, uh, so it's my so basically I am, uh, uh, I, I get so I work midnight to eight pretty much, and I um, and so I basically came home and I you know kind of you know tried to get you know I basically got a few hours of sleep and stuff like that, but um, it, yeah basically my my uh my Sundays, I just kind of try to leave open for like, um, you know, doing, you know, you know, doing these sort of streams or doing videos and stuff like that. So yeah, no, it, it, you know, I try to kind of cram everything into the, you know, the short, you know, time off that I do. So. <laughs> I, unfortunately for me, I just, of course, people don't know what's going on. I my hours have been reduced at my job. I used to work. Oh, I used to work um, fourteen hours a week. It's reduced to eight. Oh my god! Because I don't work cashier. 
at my job. So if you don't work cashier, of course, that's just an ex a way to try to get rid of the disabled. Yeah. Let's, just, let, let's say it how it is. Yeah, it's completely ableist, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like, what the fuck? I can do, there's like, I can do everything else in this goddamn store. The cashing's not the only thing there is to do. They just don't want me, me or any disabled person there. Yeah. I fucking hate this job. I hate retail as a whole. I fucking, the people are assholes. <laughs> yeah. I, the, I used to work, um, I used to work at a pizza place for a year. And then I worked at Ross for a year. And that, I, and, and honestly, I would have, I would rather, if I had to go back to one of those, I would rather go back to making the fucking pizzas. <laughs> well, I would tell where I work, but not on a live stream. Cause yeah. I, cause there's someone at my job that knows I do YouTube content. Yeah. And I, and I do not want him reporting like what I do online. If I were to yeah. say something about my job, cause who knows what. Uh, call me paranoid. I don't. I I, I, I am paranoid. I'll be lying because I I want when I go on the job. I don't know who's who's a friend and who is and who's an enemy. Yeah, the most I tell people about my current job is that I'm basically a I'm basically a glorified receptionist and fire monitor. Basically, like I don't like that's pretty much my job. I it, it, you know it, it it's nothing fancy, but hey it gets it, it helps me pay rent and utilities and stuff like that and i get to work you know i get to work close by to my partner and stuff like that who again makes who's basically a technician and works like and uh works 12 hour shifts regularly and makes pretty much double the amount of money annually that i do so like you know between the two of us, you know, we're comfortable, but we're not like, you know, but we're also not like, um, but we're also like, not like well off, you know, in any way where we're, you know, where we don't have to worry about money. We, cause we still do, we, we, you know, we still worry about money all the time. So, <laughs> And in fact, I'm the one that probably worries more about money because I only make about 30k a year. <laughs> I make even less than that. And, and I and I when I did my taxes this year, um, I paid about twelve thousand dollars in taxes this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. The, the entire, yeah, you know, the, the the entire U.S. tax system is a fucking Ponzi scheme. <laughs> it's bullshit. It is. It's complete and utter bullshit. And you know, yeah. Don't get me. Don't don't get me get started on. Of course, that that's a topic for a different stream on how if you're disabled, um, how you big, get fucked up for life when they put put you in special ed classes. Yeah. See, they probably would have if I had, if I knew what I actually had back then. Um, because at first they just thought that I had, uh, I had ADHD or something like that as a kid. But it turns out as I got older, they actually realized, oh, no, you actually have autism. Well, actually, at the time, it was still described as Asperger's syndrome, but obviously because of the connotations with that particular name uh they just lumped it in with with autism because it is it's part it's part of the autism spectrum and um yeah no i uh and, and once i had gotten that diagnosis i started realizing huh this explains a lot of shit <laughs> and um and it's also funny because I also had that same realization when I ended up, uh, w when I finally came out as trans and I, even to this day, I'm still with both, you know, the, with both being trans and also being autistic, I, with both situations, I'm still kind of looking back at, at, you know, things and realizing, huh, 
that makes a lot of sense. That definitely explains why I am how I am now. <laughs> I was labeled as mentally retarded for until a few, until like six years ago, where I was properly diagnosed as with having autism. Yeah, it's like, well, that's nice. I mean, it, <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, I did use it to my advantage because a lot of these programs underestimate my intelligence. Because of the of the label, they say, "Wait, this 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 person is able to present himself well. Why is he labeled as mentally retarded?" Of course, they also weaponize this against me to basically make it seem like it's my fault. I'm in my position because I'm yeah, I'm way too smart to be in this position. Well, it's also from in my position. I it's I, I see I'm never really been labeled as being you know mentally like retarded or developmentally disabled or anything like that um it's just and for me i basically look at it kind of like um from it, at least in my position and probably and I, you know i don't know what your situation is so correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like in kind of especially in what we do here and you know being mls and stuff like that and talking you know about you know experiences and talking about you know different talking points and stuff like that i feel like for us it's more of a superpower that and, a, and kind of somewhat of an advantage than a disadvantage now i can also understand the flip side of that of how it can be a disadvantage and like other things and other people but for me personally it's always kind of i've found it to be somewhat of an advantage because you know it makes me it it makes me good at what i do it makes me want want to be better at what i do because because part of that is kind of that slightly like hyper fixation that that uh, obsessive compulsive sort of thing that goes along with autism so yeah that that's that's me personally <laughs> well i if i had well my family is basically creative in nature so it does play a part in that because i'm a creative person at heart and it's one of the reasons i'm as jaded and bitter about this system as i am because <laughs> when i finally figured out what i wanted to do i was basically locked out i i found out quickly just how this much the system sacks sack stuff against you. Yeah, I want to be. I wanted to be an author. I, I wanted to write a book of my own and my my own book. Instead of bitching about what Disney, I'm bit, this was back when Disney did Dis, with the Last Jedi was coming out. When I started to come to this realization, it's like why waste my time complaining about this when I can just create something myself. Right, my money where my mouth is. Yeah, and I found out quickly how elitist and how out of, and how you basically have to if, if you want to be a good writer you be, you cannot depend on these institutions to to help you you have to do it by by trial and error right yeah like, like no amount of like going schooling is gonna is gonna make you a be, be able to write your own book yourself you're gonna have to do it through trial and error and i've learned that the hard way <laughs> I wish I would have learned it earlier in my life rather than learning it in my late twenties. Yeah, that was kind of how it was for me too. I, I was, I think I got officially diagnosed in 2018. So I think, so I would have been 27 at the, I, I, yeah, I would have been about tw turning 27 that year. And, um, What's funny is that about a year uh, is that it was actually a year later that I ended up also finding out I was trans. So I'm trying to process the idea already that I'm autistic, but now I'm also trying to come to the realization and, you know, the self acceptance and stuff like that that I'm also trans. So it's like I'm, you know, and while doing that, I ended up ha going uh, while dealing with that i ended up going through a divorce the year after that so in the course of about three years i you know in, you know i ended up finding out a lot about myself and about life and 
people and yeah no so i can understand i, I can understand the part about being jaded at the world because yeah. I, i've just gone through a lot of shit um but but i'm I, I, I mean, I understand and I've accepted now that I'm autistic. I've, I understand and accept a lot of, you know, that I'm trans, obviously, and fully, how I fully embrace both. Um, and I've come to, you know, I, I've come to acceptance and learned to forgive, um, you know, the person that I was married to for three four like three four years um and just realized that you know they were just a very toxic person and that um because the person i was with was very emotionally and verbally and mentally abusive and it was kind of part of the reason why i actually was uh gone from youtube for so long i actually did a video explaining that when i came back um but basically that's why i was pretty much gone for a couple of years because i was dealing with this horribly toxic marriage and then on top of that i was finding out a lot of things about myself so that was so it was finally in uh, it was uh december of 2021 when i finally was like you know what <laughs> i think i'm finally ready to tell my story and come back and uh it's i mean it's paid off i mean you know i i i've been just remarkably blessed by you know the support that i've gotten the uh from the community that we're part that that we're part of and just the people that i've uh, i've met and become friends with and just it's been a it's, if anything it's kind of it's one of those things where it's like you really can overcome a lot of you know a lot of obstacles and stuff like that and you know have a you know a really better outlook and it makes you a better person and in our case can you know make our content even better and it opens up a lot of doors down the line so you know i mean i definitely would not be you know doing streams with you or with uh comrade net or probably even collaborating with jason like 10 years ago because that 10 years ago i was just just you know this little shit that you know had just got you know that had just started getting into you know marxism and stuff like that and was also just horribly you know confused and bitter i mean i'm still bitter at the world but <laughs> but the difference is i'm more self-aware of you know of who i am now than where i was way back then so it's yeah <laughs> it, it, it's kind of remarkable to, you know how far a person can come and that so yeah like i guess if anything that's kind of a, a nice little positivity that can come out of this whole thing that i can share with people <laughs> well i was in a tox i was in many toxic groups i think in in 20 this of course this if anyone's heard anyone who's wait, watched my star wars content would know this well <laughs> like in 2017 up until 20 um 21 i was in various toxic groups i'm not going to mention them all because that would that we would be here all day yeah. let's just say one of them, there were Star Wars groups. Most when I look at it in retrospect, I can't believe how many Nazis I interacted with on a regular basis in the Star Wars fandom. I'm talking when I look back on it. Yeah, and then and then we had be then I had be liberal. I met in early 2019. Oh God, I don't even I I I, I cringe at that at that idea that I was his <laughs> friend. Oh. And yeah. Ewoks unhinged, the uh, or Ewoks or dialectics unhinged. Oh God! <laughs> I can't take that name seriously. <laughs> <laughs> when I first mentioned that, one of my streams, if you watched it, I was laughing so hard, people thought I was choking. <laughs> <laughs> But but seriously, I'm 
<laughs> without, of course, be fair, without Ewoks on Hinge, I don't think I would have contacted with have any contact with Net, Danky, or Jason. Yeah. So there were good things that came out of it, but God, I can't. That that was I was in a lot of toxic groups. Yeah, I, and I I definitely will say this though, like, and I, like I said, I really uh, appreciate the support from that Jason has given me and stuff like that, and you know, um, because in a lot of ways he kind of was. He was actually one of like the first Marxists that I had kind of come across on YouTube. Um, um, so I was like pretty much watching him from like the beginning. So this was even like before I even became um, became an ML. And I was actually watching. Um, yeah, and I was just watching his videos and I would just. I would just sit there and I would watch them and I would listen and I would, you know, just kind of, you know, be like, and of course at the top, back at the time, I was like, eh, I don't know about that exactly, but you know, I guess I could kind of see where he's coming from. And then, you know, kind of the more that I would listen to him, the more I'm like, well, you know what, let me, let me actually kind of like start reading, start reading some stuff. And I did. And I was just, and it start, and the more that I started reading stuff like that and actually educating myself beyond just what I'm taught in U S propagandized schools. Um, and just listening to, you know, to Jason and other Marxists that I would come across, I was like, you know what? Yeah, no, fuck this system. Fuck this shit. And, um, so I, and that was, and, um, eventually I, yeah. And I think I was about, I think it was about 2011 that it started finally clicking for me. And then I finally became a actual ML in about 2012. And, um, so yeah, I've been following Jason pretty much for pretty much from the beginning since he's been on YouTube and I've just been, and, uh, yeah. So, at this point you know it's been i've probably been probably one of his longest like viewers and stuff like that and the one that's actually and one of the people that's kind of like um like one of the people that actually like st stood by him all this time so um <laughs> you know and i oh and he's also kind of was um the reason for kind of why I ended up starting to do a lot of political content and stuff like that. And I kind of was trying to, um, hone my, you know, my abilities and stuff like that, you know, kind of based off of, you know, you know, kind of based off of the way that he, that he formatted things. And obviously I was still very much an amateur at the time I was, uh, you know, and I was, um, you know, and I was not very comfortable talking in front of a camera back then i mean i'm still an awkward fuck but that's beside the point at least now i'm more confident in who i am and i think a lot of that is because i've finally embraced who i truly was and um i think that has that has if anything been the biggest uh change that has come out of that so but I definitely, as far as, you know, where I've been, where I, where I am now and, um, you know, kind of the influence that I've had over the years, I do definitely owe a lot to Jason because he, um, cause yeah, he, he was, uh, he was definitely one of the youth, the, the Marxist YouTubers that I really looked up to the most and, um, and, and who pretty much taught me kind of introduced me really to what Marxism really was and actually laid things out in, in a very digestible way that, you know, didn't make me feel like I was sitting in a college, you know, like a college lecture. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the first Jason video I saw was his mailbags. I know that's probably, <laughs> that's probably going to, make him cringe but i i just thought i thought they were funny i thought because 
I was in my edgy atheist and Christian and conservative phase, and I thought anybody that shitted on conservatives was was funny to me. I know it's funny too because uh, about a month or so ago in my Discord, uh, we were having a uh, conversation. Uh, me and some of the uh, some of the comrades that are in my Discord, we were having a uh, we were kind of brought came up on that subject and we were like yeah we kind of miss we kind of miss those mailbags and stuff like that so yeah uh jason if you've made it this far make more damn mailbags um <laughs> when, when he did one la uh, for christmas i was like oh my god i gotta watch this i know <laughs> it was so I, funny I, I, my first thought my first thought about it was like it's back baby it's back <laughs> <laughs> so yeah jason make some make some more of those we miss them <laughs> i could do it myself but it wouldn't be the same same i you know i i, I could i could literally take like all like the transphobic and other sort of like bullshit comments that i have and i could probably make my own but i but i'm like eh, there's only one that was his that was his his thing from like the beginning and i don't want to feel like i'm taking his thing and it's also that whole thing that it's just like nobody can do jason's thing quite like jason so <laughs> <laughs> of course i w it took me a while for me to consider communism though but i yeah. i watched jason because I I I didn't trust Fox News or CNN. I thought Alex Jones. I thought he was a joke. Yeah, I certainly. Cause, because every all the stuff he's heard is like, is this guy an actor or is he an actual uh, journalist? What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> like I couldn't yeah. take him seriously. It's kind of like how how uh, kind of like how uh, uh, Andy No is uh, in uh, in Portland. It's like he's a journalist. But, you know, but he's not a very good one. He's basically, he, he, he's a wannabe is what he is. He, he pretends to, to want to be, he, he pretends to be a journalist. He, you know, he writes, you know, articles that, you know, is that frankly, um, I could probably wipe my ass with. So, <laughs> like, I'm, you know, and, you know, not only that, it's just also the fact that Andy No is just a horrible, you know, human being that, you know, likes to uh, sideline himself with uh, fascists. So. <laughs> I cannot stand that guy. I mean. <sighs> he, yeah, he is, he is probably got to be one of the most despicable human beings in probably that it, you know it that happens to you know roam the the streets of portland you know and i'm just yeah and, and, and it's funny too because he's actually um at one point he's actually uh uh retweeted me and stuff uh or, like screen capped one of my tweets before and like act and, and like like yeah you know called me out before for some bullshit and um yeah so it's just like he he's he's just a royal ass he, he he's really to be quite honest he's a grifter he's really no different than what we deal with with haws and mopping and stuff like that he's no di he, he's really no different in his case it's like he's just he's just a conservative that you know that just panders to the uh you know to the you know to fascists that that's all he is he, he's looking for clout he's looking for attention and you know and and yeah he gets it but i think for the most part most people nowadays have largely just kind of have largely just kind of forgotten about him and because he still posts stuff on twitter but no one actually really listens to his to his stupid ass anymore <laughs> speaking of which like is there really such thing as a conservative in america anymore not really I'm, I'm just, this is rhetorical i mean because because america is so far to the right that 
conservatism is too far is not far enough for these people conservatism is basically what the democratic party is now <laughs> <laughs> that goes to gee, that goes to show you how fascist this country is a like, god when the democratic I, party is 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 a conservative party yet they're considered left wing yeah i came to that realization probably about eh, i don't know about two years ago i think and i just realized because people want to call them centrist no they're not they're not centrist a centrist is a person that would weigh both sides of the aisle and you know a person that could see the benefits of so you know socialism you know ba basically kind of like a suck a, a sock uh, yeah, one of the sock dems like that. That would be, in my opinion, what a centrist technically is. Because let's be real, a sock dem is just, you know, essentially a soft core fascist that hasn't gotten to, all to full fledged fascism yet. And so they would be the people I would consider centrist. Liberals, particularly in, you know, like a lot of circles like Australia or, you know, Canada, well, maybe well, Canada too, I guess. And then the U S they aren't left wing. They aren't centrist. They are basically just the modern day conservatives and the conservatives that we American conservatism, as we used to know, it is no longer, no longer really exists. It has moved all the way, you know, it has moved towards this, you know, ultra right fascist, you know, enigma. It's, and yeah, <laughs> it's funny that Ronald Reagan would be considered a left wing by today's um, standard yeah. of establishment. It's like, what the fuck? And he was pretty right wing in his time. I think it's kind of funny that uh, people like George Bush and. Uh, John McCain, and I don't know if you remember Meg Whitman when she ran for um, uh, gut when she ran for governor of California. Well, uh, what uh, year was this? This was about 2010, I believe, would have oh. been. Um, but basically, she was the uh, she was the uh, like one of the original or one of the first couple of like CEOs of eBay or whatever it was. Um, and then she ended up going, I think she became like the CEO of Hewlett Packard. And then, um, uh, then funny enough, she actually was the, the head of, uh, that, uh, Quibi or whatever it was that, uh, streaming service with that had like 10 minute, like episode shows and stuff like that, that like failed miserably. Um, yeah, she was CEO of that. Um, but she, um, but all these people, like that i've mentioned mccain george bush meg whitman they would they're still conservative in the traditional sense because well first of all meg whitman and uh, you know gets um you know is pretty close with the biden administration that should also sh again show you just you know how far to the right and how shitty everything's gotten here but yeah she basically is what conservatism in america pretty much is it was meant to, you know and what was meant to be whereas most republicans now are just you know you know white supremacists and you know yeah <laughs> but what does it mean to be a conservative because i don't see them conserving anything the only thing i see them um, doing is tearing everything that down that makes the system work Exactly. It, we, then that's why I kind of think the word conservative is just kind of a, it, it's kind of a very, it's a misnomer. <laughs> it doesn't, it means nothing. The, it only mean, thing they're, the only thing they're conserving is the status quo. That's it. I mean, let's be honest. Words mean nothing anymore anyway, and to, you know, in 2023. <laughs> no, they don't. I mean, you know, the the fact that we ha have literal MAGA communists, <laughs> like, words mean nothing anymore. Like, holy Ma crap. MAGA communism, when I first heard this, that, I was like, what the fuck? Is this a joke? Are, are they trying to you know, discredit communists by putting that stupid fucking <laughs> name on there? I shit you not, too. I came across... A, this was a few months ago it was me and a couple other comrades 
there is a, just a, like a small group, but there is a small group of, of trans people um, that call themselves Blair White communists. I, I am not kidding. That is, what the yeah. Fuck? And I'm and I'm just kind of like, what the fuck? Like we like this is how bad things have gotten. <laughs> you know, social media in, was a mistake. Yeah. Just holy crap. <laughs> it's like, fuck. You know, I'm glad I'm banned from Twitter. Thank you, Joanne, for ban- for getting me banned because I'm free from that cancer. Yeah. Trust me. I, I like, I, Twitter for me, it's a cesspit. It's kind of also like a bad, to me, to me, it's kind of like, what, like a bad, God, this is going to sound like such a Californian problem. Um, I, I, it's like watching a bad car accident. You, you you see the wreckage and you see, you know, how bad it is and, you know, and, you know, how tore up the person is in the car. And it's like, you're horrified by it, but you just can't turn away from it. You still got a rubber neck and you still got to, got to see what the fuck is going on. That is basically Twitter more and more. And the di- and the problem is, is that Twitter is such a fucking wreck that it's you know that it's also on fire and the people within it within that car are burnt you know burning alive. That it's is funny. Twitter. It's funny how fast Elon Musk has killed Twitter when he became the the CEO of it. Yeah, but also none of us are surprised. He's an <laughs> idiot. He really is an idiot. Yeah, well, I mean, his Tesla stock has also, like, depreciated so horribly that, to be quite honest, I wouldn't even be surprised if Tesla doesn't eventually go tits up, but you know, in the next couple of years. <laughs> That's too much to hope for. It is, but, you know, it, it, I think it's I think it's hilarious that, yeah, his Tesla stock has only continued to depreciate since he took over Twitter. And that, you know, and that's because, well, you know, just just like any other, you know, business person, you know, like him, um, they quickly ruin everything they touch. They've gotten, you know, too big for, you know, you know, for their own good. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like Bob Iger and his stupidity with with trying to basically push Disney Plus onto ever onto Disney. The, the, the very yeah. service that, that's basically just bankrupting their company. They've lost hundreds of billions of dollars on that service alone. Yeah. Well, it's also funny because Disney... Uh, so I actually went down this rabbit hole at one point because I just because I was curious. And sometimes curiosity gets the better of me. Um, and I found that Hulu is actually owned by disney because hulu is basically um where which makes sense because hulu is where they put a lot of like their you know 20th century fox and fox television and adult swim content and stuff like that so you know that that you know so a lot of your uh yeah so basically anything that was owned by you know fox was pretty much put on the hulu platform um especially once disney um, took you know took ownership of it and um yeah so i th- and then i think that they were pl- at one point they were planning on uh, like spinning off you know s- another streaming service or something like that but i think they they nixed that idea because yeah they've been losing so much uh from the disney plus because well yeah bob Iger's an idiot well, yeah, it's like, seriously, if, unless you are a fan of Star Wars and Marvel, you're not going to fucking go for Disney+. Plus. And let's be real, both Marvel and Star Wars are not necessarily in a good place at right. this time. Like, like, for, like, for like, me, the only other real thing that I like that I like on there is, like, occasionally I'll stream the, the, the I'll, I'll stream the occasional, like, Disney movie. Like, I, I have a nine-year-old sister, almost, well, going on 10 at this point and she I, so for the first few years of her life i was helping to raise that kid and 
so things like Lilo and Stitch and Frozen were playing constantly on the TV. <laughs> and so, um, and, and I've kind of developed a bit of a soft spot, I guess, for, for those movies and stuff like that. And I should, and kind of a little bit of an embarrassing thing is that I actually do have a uh, two foot tall uh, Olaf plush. And then somewhere around here, somewhere, I think it might be back here. Yes, it is. I actually have the uh, fire spirit uh, plushie uh, from the Frozen Two movie. So yeah, I you know I I I have a I have a disease. <laughs> well, Disney's I've heard is going to remake that movie, and it's like <laughs> I, I, hear, I hear different things. I hear that they're going to reboot Frozen, or that they're going to make a third Frozen movie. Um, in which uh, supposedly the rumor was is that they were going to have a third Frozen movie where they hinted at Elsa basically having a um, very, very close relationship with another female um, character. So basically they, it was the rumor mill was is that they were going to make essentially Elsa a lesbian. But I think don't think that has taken off uh because Dis very obviously disney that won't would be... do it because disney yeah well it would be considered too woke you know for a lot of people and you know and disney you know for yeah you know despite certain positives but also playing into many of the negatives is that they they still value is that they're still going to value their bottom line more than you know trying to you know you know be more progressive in their in their media i mean it, yeah like am i the only one that thinks that star wars has become regressive since disney um, yes it, it's okay. become the, uh, my partner and i have had this discussion about how Pretty much the only one that was really good was probably, um, uh, probably, oh, fuck, what was the, there was The Force Awakens, and then there was, um, what was the one, the second, the second one called? You mean, the, you mean The Last Jedi, the least bad one? Uh, yeah, that one. And then, of course, then they had the, the Rise of Skywalker. And see, <laughs> they could easily just made one, like, one long film, like a two and a half, even three hour Star Wars film to basically tie everything that they did in those three movies together. They could have done that in one movie. And but no, they you know George Lucas sold his soul to Disney, and then they and then you know they made and they made you know two out of three of those films they made one good one. It's and no disrespect to the original series or anything like that, but the best one in my opinion uh, from the original series was The Empire Strikes Back. And my favorite from the and my, and personally, I think the only good one from the 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 prequel trilogy was Revenge of the Sith. So, like uh, my, my that's Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. It I, I so there is a lot of things growing up that I look back on now and realize, huh, that explains a lot. And one of those things is the fact that. Um, that when I was, yeah, probably about, I think Revenge of the Sith came out when I was about, I think it was about 2000, what, four or five or so when that came out. So I think I was about probably in middle school. And, you know, it was one of those things where I realized when I, when I saw Hayden Christensen in those movies, I'm like, you know what, maybe I'm not completely straight. And, and then, uh, and yeah, so it's one of those things where it's just kind of like, uh, even now, and even now with him, uh, in, the in the, uh, Star Wars, like, show, uh, in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series that they, 
uh, put out. Uh, he still looks good for his age. <laughs> I, I, I don't think Kenobi is as bad as people say it, it is. And I'm, I, it was a lot better than people give it credit for. I actually thoroughly enjoyed that one. That, 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 like, I can't like the Mandalorians is, is pretty it, it, like I like the Mandalorian and Pedro Pascal is a great actor and the fact that he's also uh, related to um, uh, Salvador Allende was all is also kind of based but um, it's uh, it's I just think it's kind of uh, but at the same time it's just kind of like there's a lot of Star Wars shows that they have been making that just are crap i mean it i i mean i could also say the same for some of the star trek shows that they're trying to put out these days too but you know it is my my problem with the with the current disney star wars is too fucking much of it i know it's it's like whatever you're a fan of whatever medium star wars all almost all of it's crap like the book the books are not that i I, have not not been good for a long time yeah comics are just oh it's like hey let's just read a Darth vader fan fiction yeah and the movies have not none of the the only movie that i can say is decent is the last jedi yeah and the disney plus shows it would have been so much better if he if he just like had like maybe a just let these one or two shows out at a time instead of having a bunch of them yeah honestly to be quite honest with you yeah the 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 uh sky the last of the skywalker saga that they put out the the last three movies either they could have done it in one whole movie or they could have just made that an actual like 10 episode like mini series or something like that or even six episode mini series like they did with kenobi i just I don't like, think you could have done a good follow up to Return of the Jedi. I, yeah, I, I just right. think it's impo- I just think it's impossible because let's be honest, you have before the sequels came out, you had decades of of books and comics that took place after those films. It was imp- it was an impossible tax to fulfill because you you by default you have better stories in the books. So what the fuck yeah. do you follow up on? Like I like, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that they did the prequel series and stuff like that to act, you know, kind of like, you know, show where, you know, how Anakin became, you know, Darth Vader and everything like that. But I think that the whole sequel series of, of that they've had with, you know, uh, that they've d- that they've done these last three films, I just kind of think it was rather unnecessary. Like. Why did we really need that? Like, the Empire is dead. It's like, you know, do we really need to base it? Because to me, it just, all it really feels is like, it just feels like it's, like, it was recycled, well, basically. If, it was re- like a, re- almost like a shitty reboot. You want to know, if, you, if I rewrote the sequels, I would basically have its, the reemergence of fascism be the main theme of the first film. Yeah. Like, I, I would have the the Force Awakens parallel the Phantom Menace. Yeah, and then I'd have this the follow up. Then again, I just feel like you couldn't do the, these in three films. Like you said, you you would need you need at least twenty hours worth of content to tell the story well. Right, and that's why I'm saying like you know they could have easily like you know made that maybe into like a series, even if they only did it for like two seasons or something like that. They could have made just easily broken that down into like one hour segments, and it's just you know, I don't know. It just it, to me it feel it, the way that they did that. It just it, 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 you know, it's typical of Disney. It, it's it, you know they they did it because they're cheap. And <laughs> I think I might address this in more in depth probably in a separate video. But I was going to say this: there the three new movies there they have announced. The only one I think it's going to happen is Dave Filoni's. The other two, yeah. I have great skepticism considering Disney's track record since they bought the franchise. Like, how many Star Wars films have been canceled? People still mm-hmm. don't seem to forget that Boba Fett's movie was going to happen. It was canceled. The Kenobi yeah. series was going to be a movie. It was canned well, as well. Honestly, honestly though, 
I, I mean, at the end of the day, we still got a pretty good product out of the Kenobi series because I don't know how well that would have actually done as an actual film. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that as a criticism, by the way. I'm just saying that a lot of these shows, like either they're reper, like I don't trust it unless I see a trailer. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like okay, there's a follow up tr- film that's going to focus on Ray. Do we really want to fucking see Ray train a new generation of Jedi? <laughs> Because I'm sorry, yeah. that story has already been told. It's been told through Luke, with yeah. over 20 books, like in the 90s. We, I don't want it, that story told again. And that's why I say it. Felt it, it feels cheap. It feels recycled. It, you know, it, it's just you're basically. Re, well, it's it's essentially a reboot. You know, just it, just have her be a Jedi Master already, and have her and have her and and just introduce new characters. We don't need to see her rebuild the damn thing. It, I don't care to see that. Yeah, we don't need to see, you know, a, you know, a, you know, rump state galactic empire, you know, we don't need, you know, fighting against, you know, you know, essentially the, the alliance, which, you know, we already saw that that was literally the whole premise of, you know, the original, the original trilogy. So it's like, so yeah, it just, it, it, it felt in a lot of ways, it just, they it was just, to me, it feels like they were just trying to put out a couple extra films to you know keep milking that money out of people and that and essentially that's kind of what they're doing with the entire franchise now because disney bought it out and they saw dollar signs and they're like hey how can we we milk as much money out of this as possible oh let's just you know basically keep you know saturate you know the viewers with you know with more star wars content it's just like at this point they've basically taken it and they've ruined it which we pretty much expected (laughs) well i saw this coming uh, a mile away when they i mean the first few years they had the franchise what did they do they tore they got rid of lucas arts they they canceled a highly anticipated game that was finished and star wars 1313 yeah Shit canned Clone Wars. It get, get, it did eventually get brought back. It doesn't change the fact it got it was popular. It got canceled. Yeah. They shit canned the EU, which in retrospect I'm glad they did because God knows what what the kind of stories we have now in Star Wars. I'm glad those are not part of the EU. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just. I, I knew as soon as I that I had first heard that Disney was buying Lucasfilm, I was like, "Well, there." It's like you know, there. It's kind of like there goes the neighborhood, you know. Um, and, and it's really sad because um, the Lucas Ranch. You know, I I grew up in north in the Bay Area of Cal of Northern California, so you know, Lucasfilm uh, was one of those um those companies that was located not too far away uh lucas ranch was um you know it was located you know is also located in the uh, san francisco bay area and so basically you know everything about the entire star wars franchise was essentially born out of this you know this studio in you know the bay area and it's one of those things where it's just like then this fucking company you know big conglomeration comes along and buys it and they completely ruined you know the 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 integrity that this that you know that the that that franchise and that that studio was all about and you know no, no disrespect to lucas you know i still love his films I mean, hell, I even, um, one of my favorite films, honestly, that he put out, um, was that, was, uh, THX 1138. That one was a wonderful fucking film. Um, and just, cause it basically was, um, it was basically kind of like 1984, but in a lot of ways it was, but it was pretty, but it was like, it's the way that, that George Lucas took kind of like the idea of dystopia and stuff like that and he added his own you know science fiction elements to it that was great and the great part about it too 
was that was actually his um one like one of his like major film projects uh when he was going to uh usc so he actually made that still while he was in college <laughs> interesting i yeah i have to see that yeah if you can find it somewhere i mean you'll probably have to pay for it but um because you know whatever um but yeah it, thx 1138 that one was a i i've seen that a couple of times and honestly i probably have to put it up there in kind of in my bracket of like favorite films that i've watched because it was it was pretty good it's also kind of in a way somewhat tragic too um but um yeah i i, I thought it, it's a great it was a great film and i actually and i think for especially for a very young college uh you know college age lucas i think that that was uh that it was a that was a wonderful film especially for the time that it was made because it was made um i think it was made actually in the early 70s so this was like a few years before star the original star wars <laughs> you want to think it's interesting though no mm. there's no evidence to back this up um did you know michael jackson came close to buying marvel in the 1990s oh geez that would have that would have been something <laughs> Well, there, don't you find it? Well, I'm not going to get into the, the, the debate about Michael Jackson here, but I, yeah. don't you find it interesting how when that was about to happen, these allegations came out, and he was yeah. not, and he was not able to do the purchase. Yeah, <laughs> like it's 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 and it and it, and it, almost over a decade after Disney bought fucking Marvel. Yeah, I know. And and, it, then... and, it, and had Michael Jackson bought Marvel. It would have been all of it. it. Would have not have been pieces of it. It would have been all of it. All the characters, everything. Yeah. Like he, it was his idea to build a Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, and see, he probably would have would have really brought that to life. You know, in like he would have brought that to life in, in his own way, and it would and it probably would have been absolute. It would have been absolutely terrific, and not knocking what marvel is like some of the movies but god some of the ones that have come out in recent years have been shitty well the reason i bring this up because it's interesting how it seems like to this day capitalists steal ideas from from the black community and continue to do so oh yeah <laughs> it's like michael jack if, without michael jackson we would not have the marvel cinematic universe so i know you have to, you have to thank my him for that and i'm not gonna get into that <laughs> I'm not going to get into about the allegations of Michael Jackson because if I were to, because that's a can of worms I do not want to fucking touch <laughs> in a thing like this. Well, I don't want to touch it. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Yeah. All righty. Well, um, yeah. No, this has been an interesting stream, and it, it. This the the ending of this definitely dev devolved to something completely different. But I I'm, I suggest we just reiterate one last time if you have the time. Ben. I do actually. <laughs> okay, let's just re let's change the subject back. I mean, it's a good nice to take a break. I mean, the subject of fascism is very stressful and depressing. Oh uh, yeah, I know. And, and, uh, unfortunately, I have to go back to it, my audience. Yeah, no, basically, you know, the what what I've just kind of was trying the issues that I was trying to really touch on is just the fact that it is, you know, there's a lot we could say about in retrospect to the whole Nashville shooting, but I don't want to give any more attention to the, you know, to the perpetrator than I already have to. And this, basically, the situation that I've found is just it's a tragic event but at the same time this by no means is is grounds for people this is by no means a reason for people to be transphobic it's you know and despite that people are still going to be transphobic so the people that you know keep you know lobbying about oh well we need to you know we need to get rid of the guns no we need to do the exact opposite we need to actually arm ourselves and 
to like actually like learn how to shoot and defend ourselves because it you know this is you know because this is a real threat and all and all that the the all that gun control is going to do is play right into the hands of the fascists that plain and simple that you know and it's just you know that whole liberal concept of oh well, you know getting rid of the guns will make us safer no quite the opposite it's actually going to make things a lot worse for maybe not white people but it's going to you know especially cis het white people but it's definitely going to you know make it harder for trans people for gay people for people of color for indigenous people so, you know, it's it's going to make things a lot worse. And at the end of the day, that's kind of kind of the point that they're trying to that they're trying to, you know, get to because as much as liberals want to say that they are allies or that they're, you know, uh, you know, people for social justice and stuff like that like they actually really give a shit, they're no, they they benefit from, you know, the status quo they benefit from you know white supremacy and so why would they want to give up that you know those benefits that position of power when they be- when they benefit from it especially if it means profit for them so <laughs> and then you know it and just yeah it's just this whole yeah, this whole whole debate about, you know, you know, like, you know, yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy. <laughs> um, I don't got any much thing else to say other than it was a pleasure to have you on and I'm looking forward to doing a collaboration again. Absolutely, I really look forward to it. Like I, I, uh, I was kind of ta- uh, ta- jokingly telling my partner, it's like I might actually have to start making appointments. <laughs> <laughs> oh <All right>. shit! <laughs> but yeah, no, it was great being on, and uh, yeah, no, I hope everybody, uh, I hope everybody uh, loved it. I hope. <laughs> Hopefully everybody could get through it. If not, well, this might be something that you could turn on and uh, binge watch while you do laundry or something. <laughs> yes, it has a bunch of topics. We, go, we may go off subject towards the end, but then again, we have a stream that's going on for almost three hours. That's bound to happen. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, red salute, everyone, st- and stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. Have a good one.